Yeah. <laughs> it's a fundraiser for uh, this. We want to get a permanent display to maybe get it together so she can go in the you know, parades and <laughs> the common on, you know, big days. <laughs>
the select board meeting. Today is January 7th, 2020. Um, we're airing on Comcast Channel 22 and Verizon Channel 33. On tonight's agenda, we'll have reports and comments. We'll be appointing some volunteers to our boards, committees, and commissions. We'll have a preview of the 2020 annual town meeting. Um, the town manager will give a fiscal year 21 budget update. Uh, we'll have a brief presentation on the select board onboarding manual, uh, an update on um, town manager goals, um, and we'll be reviewing the town manager evaluation form, which has been changed this year. And then we're going to move on to something a little bit different, which is we're going to be having a strategy discussion, a bit of a brainstorming session on initiatives and issues that are of concern to the board so that we can implement, thing, implement them moving forward. Um, so with that, um, we're going to be limiting liaison reports tonight, but I know we did have a report from Mark. Just uh, thanks. Uh, so one quick update. Um, the uh, RMLB, RMLB commissioners meeting is taking place at the same time roughly as that we're here. Um, and of note related to our assignment on the uh, payment subcommittee is that they are discussing how to set the payment for the future. And according to their agenda, they're, um, they're going to lay out three options. The background for this very briefly is that they received a presentation from uh, a member of an industry association at their December meeting, which I attended, um, that laid out a recommendation for a lower payment to the town. Uh, the board members at that meeting discussed wanting to consider a few options and to get the citizens advisory board to weigh in and then they, the three options that are in their agenda for tonight are number one keep it where it is with no increases number two move to a mill rate formula that would result in substantially lower payments to the town uh, order by the two uh, so a um, a certain amount based on consumption or based on net assets so a uh, X per per million, roughly, mm -hmm. something like that, um, which is used by many other utilities. They use different formulas, but they'll use a different mill rate. And so they'll have a discussion. The two other options relate to what that mill rate might be. What the consultant laid out probably would result in somewhere between a five hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand dollar per year reduction, um, and then using a higher mill rate would would not be quite that steep of a of a decrease. Um, I don't know exactly what they'll do tonight, but there was a discussion of getting the Citizens Advisory Board to weigh in um, with a goal of coming back to a next meeting where they'd have open public debate and resolve this in February. That's, that's what they discussed. So that's where it is. I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware that that's kind of where it is right now. And that's the discussion. Okay. Thank you. But Mike, um, do you know when the effective date would be? Uh, I do not. In their agenda for tonight, um, one of the options specifically mentions um, a year and a half hence, I believe. And I don't know what the <coughs> options do. Because in theory, we're under an agreement for the next fiscal year to not change. And it, obviously, we need to know that from a budgetary standpoint. Yeah, it, there was no discussion of, of changing that at okay. the meetings. All right, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so um, next up, we have the town manager report. Well, thank you. Um, first, I want to thank the community for their concern and their help today. Um, fortunately, we located a missing Alzheimer's patient very quickly and very safely. Uh, winter's a scary time for that kind of a situation. Uh, thanks also to Public Safety for that and their actions on September, I'm sorry, September, I wish, December 29th, when a dangerous suspect was arrested without harming himself or his family. And thanks to Nemlek and I am told that there was 25 state police cruisers in Reading in that time, so we can get a lot of response when there's trouble very quickly. We're very appreciative. Um, the Reading Coalition for Prevention of Support is a rebranded new name from our CASA. Um, once we're out of the, um, the burden of the federal grant, so to speak, um, they have decided to broaden their mission. Um, <coughs> mental health is one of the aspects they want to pursue. There's a new staff member, so they want to do it slowly and methodically. Uh, but um, both Erica and Sammy would like to visit the board sometime in the spring, and I'll discuss that um, you know, further at that time. Um, the former Daniels House, 59 Middlesex Street, we've had a couple of comments and a couple of questions. Um, it's squarely right now in the lap of town council. He's asked the buyer, the new owner, a number of questions which have not been answered yet. Until we know those answers, there's just not much the town can say. I expect those answers will be known, and we should be able to give you an update at your next meeting. 
Um, the board will be pleased to hear that the uh, police and fire department did capacity checks on New Year's Eve and there were no violations. Uh, and lastly, uh, DPW Director Jane Kinsella is here to talk about sidewalks and plowing in general. We have some information for you. Um, the board uh, individually and in some cases collectively got a couple of comments from the public, so we just want to have Jane give you an update about what, what goes on, I guess. We, we have we had um, you know a couple of questions related to you know how we do plowing I guess and sidewalks so I wanted to just give a quick overview of that um, we have everybody all hands on deck when it when there's a storm not when we're doing pre-treating you know prior to that is the highway generally department that will come in pre-treat with salt calcium chloride before a storm but once it starts snowing and we expect snow, all the guys come in, and if we expect more than three inches, we call in all the contractors. And when I say all the contractors, we have one contractor that provides 25 pieces of equipment, and we, we hope to keep him, and the other 10 contractors combined, uh, all others combined, do 10 pieces. So that's, we're very heavily relying on that one contractor. Um, and how many do we, how many pieces of equipment, how many plows does the town actually manage? So, um, so that's about 35 pieces and we, we have more equipment than we have people to use them. So we have 40 something guys out there. Um, and that's basically doing all of the streets, that's our focus. The only difference um, is that we will do simultaneously all the parking lots, the school grounds, the like that type of stuff along with the streets. Not all communities do it that way. And then we also use two bobcats in the downtown area simultaneously with the, <coughs> with the streets. But we do all other sidewalks the following day, but depending on what span of time the guys were out there. If it's you know going on 30 hours, I'm I'm going to skip a day <laughs> before they do sidewalks again. Like I'm not going to have them go out at 7 a.m. if they left at 3 a.m. You know, um, but anyway, generally it's the following day. We don't even look at doing sidewalks while we're doing the streets because um, you know you're pushing the snow off the street into the sidewalk. You'd be doing everything twice anyway. And the priority is the streets. Um, so this is our current sidewalk map. Hasn't changed too much. We've added a little bit, you know, with some input over the last couple of years. The one thing we do now um, that we hadn't done is like King Street. We've moved the snow because parents were having an issue. Even though we did the sidewalks, they would, you know, there's a mound of snow, so they wanted to open up their car and have, have the kids just walk out and would have, you know, a row of snow there. So now we go back and we remove the snow in certain areas of the drop-offs that we haven't done before. And that was just, you know, input from parents saying, hey, you know, when it, if it made sense, we try to do it and we have time. Um, but again, that's usually the second day with the streets are the first. And the other thing is we never used to, the last year or two, we've started using keeping seasonals on. They always, for many, many years, would leave by December 1st. Um, and the last couple of years, I've kept them on because we need them as drivers. Now, they don't generally have their CDL, but they can do pickup trucks, <coughs> circles, dead ends, that type of stuff, and just training them, you know, so um, when we do hire them as laborers, they're trained. Um, but that's something just because we're so shocked with drivers that we started doing, keeping them. 
we have four sidewalk <coughs> units that we use um, and two bobcats, like I said, for the downtown area. Um, and just yesterday, I hired somebody for the first time that can provide two other type of sidewalk units. It's a um, it's called a ditch witch and the other one is a bobcat with a, a bucket. So that may help like when we get to the sidewalk part of it um, because no other um, and it's a new company so um, we had to do some work with town council because those units don't get don't fall into auto policies they fall into general liability it was kind of a new thing so it took a little time. Um, but anyway, there, you know, he's coming on board the next storm, which hopefully Tonight. we don't have. You know? yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> April. Uh, what else? Let's see. Yeah, I think the key thing to remember is that the same folks that do the roads are doing sidewalks. So, um, you know, it's important to give them rest in between. Uh, so that that's why that next day is is important and depending on where how it falls it might seem like it's two full days it could be just the way it falls and they need to get some rest before they come back out you know? um, we also don't do any um, generally plowing of sidewalks unless we've plowed the streets and we don't generally plow the streets we try to manage the street streets with calcium chloride and salt um, for anything that's three inches or less we can generally melt it you know with that um, but you know not always it depends on the temperature and various factors but two to three inches we should be able to manage without having to plow we use the calcium chloride now we wouldn't use that on the sidewalks so that's why sometimes you see the street is all asphalt that looks good after a day and you don't see that on the sidewalks it's because we don't use the calcium chloride in the salt nor would we ever on the sidewalks you know so um, that's kind of the difference it's you know it's sometimes you look at it and you go you didn't do the sidewalk we did do the sidewalks but it's going to melt differently. So. Oh yeah, some of it's damaging. The fact that a guy just called today from Beaver Road. Um, <laughs> which, uh, yeah, I know the guy. Yeah, <laughs> and very nice. But we're going to go out there tomorrow. And it, when you use, uh, you know, a sidewalk unit, it's not like a shovel, you know, so it's hitting tree lawn and it's hitting things on both sides and the ground isn't frozen, and it's not frozen, believe it or not, it will dig up. So not only will it dig up the edge of the tree lawn, it might dig up, you know, residents' lawns and stuff. So that's the other reason why we try not to do it unless, see, if, if we had a foot of snow and we had that much at the end of it, because we, everybody would be thrilled, right? Oh, they did the sidewalks. But because you see two or three inches of, and, and we don't want to plow that because you're plowing the edges of tree lawns and everything else as you go along because right now the, the, it's not frozen enough to withstand that the, um, the units going over them so um. yeah uh, did you say that you also you treat the roads and you but you treat the sidewalks differently but they'll melt or something they'll just melt more so you don't treat the okay no because no. there's we would now use salt on them and right. what we use on the road is a combination of salt and calcium chloride so yeah we just use the units so you'll see snow on them for a longer period of time because of that um, Jean can I ask a question also sure. the roots that you show there those are mostly those are uh, sidewalks sidewalk, uh, right sorry yeah. sidewalks that are pathways to schools correct and a little further out yeah uh, you know some of the around some of the buildings and stuff like that. But yeah, we don't, it's 25 miles of sidewalks that they do. Okay, thanks. And, and the, um, mm -hmm. the town regulation actually, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong here, is that each resident is supposed to be taking care of the sidewalk in front of their home? Oh, I correct? wish. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah, really, okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Where are we here? This one. Okay. Yeah. So, Chris, Chris, um, a lot of communities do that. Mark, by the way, a lot of communities do that. Yeah. Do, yeah. do we not? I we thought don't we did. Require that. In the in the bylaws. Right. Or that I know of. Nope. Yeah. It's not in there. Yeah. yeah. It got as far as the select the front of the selectmen and then did not proceed any further. Uh, what was the argument? I want to say five years ago. Hmm. Elderly couldn't show. Yeah. 
I was actually wondering about you know, elderly or people with mobility issues and being yeah. able to get not not um, not the question of them being able to clear, but those who require the sidewalks to get around because they don't have access to a mm -hmm. vehicle or they you know they might go downtown by way of it, um, a wheelchair or do you hear from people who require the sidewalks to get around who don't necessarily have access to a vehicle and is there any um, accommodation that can be provided to them? Um, I haven't heard specifically about that. I've heard more this past couple of storms from walkers <coughs> having to be maybe out on the road or feeling like the, yes. it, the road looked better than the sidewalk, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, but generally, and it's ironic because we have heard zero complaints, maybe you have, um, about the roads, you know? <laughs> so the last couple of mm -hmm. storms, it's been, a couple, you know, yeah, honestly. Um, you know, maybe, I'm, I'm gonna say, you know, three, comments related to the sidewalks you may have heard more but and it's true it's it, you know part of it too is that there was you know that ice layer it's just not going to to melt the same and it's going to be you know a little bit of a crunchy thing and gotten a few calls on it but I, once you explain like why we're not salting you know people understand that but as far as people having to have access I we I personally have gotten calls saying I can't go from here to there because of it. You know, I think people are more concerned that some are having a walk in the street, you know. So. Thank you, Jane. Are there other questions from the board before we move on? Yeah, um, I think um, because there are a number of people who do count on walking in this town, as, as Ian said, that we want it in certain places like access to school, school access, and train depot access. Um, I think it's really important that we treat, we make the sidewalks as safe as the road. Um, and, and so if we treat the sidewalks, say for example, in the scenario you gave less than three inches or three inches, you treat the roads with salt and you can't do that with the sidewalks, I understand. But um, I think there would be value in, and it would improve the safety of the sidewalks if we um, plow the sidewalks even if there's three inches because often what happens is depending on the temperature in the next couple of days people walk on it right and um, and um, then as soon as they put the foot down it becomes it turns into ice and um, people will be sleep slipping on that or um, it, it'll melt and then freeze uh, so so I my goal would be to have the sidewalks to the schools and to the, the depot um, ice free um, after you know as soon as you can after a storm uh, so it's I'm a gonna, safety concern but um, I'm going to suggest we table this Jane thank you um, if this is a board concern we can always add this to our brainstorming session for later on and there can be a longer presentation from, from Jane okay. staff. Um, thanks thank but you very much for the Vanessa yes um, it, if I could ask the boards interested um, to ask the town manager to have that that um, having a look at an approach that would keep the sidewalks safe, um, like the roads, um, and see what that would look like. Why don't we a, 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 a plan you know, <coughs> for our next meeting or something like that? Noted. And why don't we take that offline? Okay. We'll connect after. All right. So, um, Bob, are you all set from the town thank manager? You. Yes, Perfect. Thank you. All right, so uh, we'll open it up to public comment. Um, please raise your hand, provide your name and address. Um, I <laughs> noted. Uh, please keep your comments to topics under the purview of the board, and please no derogatory or campaign related comments. Okay. Bill? Yeah. Uh, Bill Brown, 28 Matt Road. Uh, you brought up, somebody brought up children in the sidewalks. Uh, the 13th Amendment of the United States Constitution. Uh, that is indented servitude and it's against my violation of my 13th Amendment rights. And I will not vote. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Bill. Peter. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Peter Chairman, Franklin Street. Uh, about the sidewalks. As you, we all had a conversation last Tuesday about the lovely sidewalks in Reading. A little miscommunication on the board of the Director of Public Works here. It was only a couple inches of snow. 
But on Main Street, you take two lanes of snow and you put it on the sidewalk. Now it's important. Franklin Street, you take a lane, you put it on the sidewalk. Now it's six or seven inches. It's not just two inches. Reading doesn't have six, eight foot tree lawns. Most of the time the sidewalks are in the street are separated by an eight-inch grips. As I call every town around Reading, Wakefield, Melrose, Wilmington, North Reading, plowed their streets last Tuesday. I mean the sidewalks. The sidewalks last Tuesday. The storm ended very early Tuesday morning. They had all day to plow the sidewalks. As I've mentioned to you people, the children of Reading went to school on Thursday. Ice covered snow. 72 year old neighbor of mine, Phil, walking his dog on the sidewalk. There's absolutely no reason they weren't done. We have more equipment and more manpower than any town around here. Every other town got them done. We got uptown, the sidewalks were done uptown, and they had a skid, one track list running around the high school. That all got done down there. So if that got done down there, the other routes could have got done. The town dropped the ball. Management dropped the ball. The men in the equipment are very good. Management dropped the ball. And all the town of Reading should hear from you tonight is, we're sorry and it won't happen again. That was outrageous for the kids to go to school Thursday morning <coughs> on that ice. Thank you very much, Governor. Thank you, Peter. Yes. Uh, Nancy Dodd, Reading Village. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to start with select board meetings on camp rice meeting the girl scout um uh camp on rice um street in it was called rice road um this has been in the works for several years i'm wondering if you could have an update on that i know that um whatever the delay is it's not the girl scouts part could you for uh could you clarify what activity is happening uh, the Girl Scouts are giving the uh, parcel to the town, or it's a no. lease, it's some type of... Not that I know of. Do you know? Yeah, I know a little bit about that. Yes. Okay. Um, so, they've visited here. They the Girl Scouts have visited here, and I will call a loosely associated group of friends of Camp Rice Moody, um, who are affiliated also with the Girl Scouts. Um, who have done some fundraising and some improvements to the to the camp. Um, the Girl Scouts use it. It has a long history, in uh, literally dating back almost a hundred years now. I think probably a hundred years now of it being in various people's hands, including a trust, which is where it's back to today. And I think what the trust wants to do um, is clear it back either to the Girl Scouts or to the town for the purposes of Girl Scout use. So, you know, I know that there's stuff perking in the background, Nancy, about that. And it is timely that you bring it up. We should probably, it's actually was on my list of things to talk about later. Okay. To clarify. Um, because, I, you know, the ownership is fuzzy. Okay. And so I believe that the town actually has it because the trust didn't want it? I don't think so. So, well, we can I guess what I'm saying that. is there's a long and winding road, okay. which we should clarify because the Girl Scouts continue to use it in huge numbers. Yeah. Through the course of the summer, there's almost a thousand, um, you know, girl days that go on over there uh -huh. um, for the Girl Scouts. And so I think particularly in light of the fact that Girl Scout efforts have greatly improved that including you know a meeting hall and uh, you know a separate outbuilding for activities we probably in it and for some reason it sticks in my head because it's been now almost two years ago i was going to say we talked about it two three years ago right. and they were going to get back to us and at least they haven't got back to me i don't so think I they've gotten back to know. us so what know, so john thank you for the background and nancy thank you for bringing that up oh go right ahead. yep thank you i also look forward to that update the other thing is that in your um Handout, there was a letter December 19th from HR. It gave an overview of issues related to retention. And while it was information, I didn't really find it very illuminating. Don't know if these are full time, part time, seasonal people. They've been here for a year, two years. If there's one department, I was wondering if perhaps um, HR could give us a little bit more information for a little more to the retention divisions. 
And then the last thing that was in your package was um, a reference to a hearing pending um, Board of Health. This is about the pesticide regulations, and I'm so glad that Jane brought up protection of our tree lawn because the pesticide regulations are about our tree lawn. Um, I know that one of your former chairs promised um, the town when he presented in April of Mr. Brown's town meeting, either 2017 or 2018, that those pesticides would be um, enacted. Uh, my understanding, according to town council, is that this board, the select board, owns the pesticide regulations, not the Board of Health. So I would hope that this board does not let another spring pass and that you actually enact those pesticide regulations. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any other public comment? Yes, Carla. I just have a good question. Carla, watch Main Street. Sorry if I missed it. I understand the residential product that Mr. Brown said. Is there an ordinance for the businesses to clear in front oh. or around the perimeter of whatever they own a lease? Um, there is not, and, and that's a little unusual. Um, you know, Jane had this document comparing Reading and Wakefield for what it's worth, and I'll just show you one point. It's a little small, but Wakefield requires all commercial properties and businesses to clear downtown sidewalks within. It depends. Uh, depends how much snow. So many hours after the snow stops falling. Uh, Reading does not have that requirement, and to my knowledge, has never discussed such a requirement. The town did discuss five, six, seven years ago whether to have some sort of a residential requirement <coughs> for shoveling sidewalks, but I don't remember any specific discussion ever about the commercial, especially the downtown. I mean, as a former business owner and owner of a small commercial property that is on the way to Dunkin' Donuts, and I will drink coffee, <laughs> but I, I, I'm mindful of you know clearing the snow, and I have a hydrant up to my fence line, and and clear the you know the, the handicap spot as well between the granite high lines. And as much as I can, I don't have any sidewalk on Green Street, but I'm amazed that other parts of town where a business owner will just shovel in front of their door and not. So I really think that should be required. I mean, for for. They should do it on their own as a business owner yeah. uh, for the customers and for the residents going to other businesses. But uh, just, want, I'm not going to name the business, but it was around the corner from their front door and it was ice. And I was kind of disappointed in the business and just wondered. And I don't know if it was discussed before I came. Thank you, Carlos. That yeah. should be required. Uh, yeah. The difference between Wakefield and Reading. Wakefield does not haul snow out of the square. Because their square is so wide, you can push the snow and you can say all winter. We've always hauled the snow in Reading. There's no place to keep it. That's why the town's always cleared the sidewalks. They push, clear, load, it's <coughs> Wakefield, Stoneham doesn't do it either. Thank you. Any other public comment? Vanessa, if, if before Nancy leaves, um, I did. Ha I do know something about where the pesticide situation uh, sits, and it's it's at least sitting with its li the board of health liaisons, which are Ann and I. I know that Me Dove uh, gave us a, a revised version, or s at least some of us. Um, I think in October. <coughs> Um, so we need to set up some time to go th go through that and so it's on us it's it's on us okay. all right thank you thank you Nancy. all right so no more public comment oh. but you want to because I you're not I on the, know if you were just talking about no the no this is this is a place to be able to talk he's new to this and okay. I know has something to well, no I and I he has something to talk about oh. his neighborhood so okay. Please. Good evening. Thanks for seeing us tonight. My name is Brian Connolly. I live at Five Body Circle. Mr. Docs, I've dealt with you back and forth in correspondence and email. I appreciate the town getting really back to us really fast. They've already put a dead end sign on the end on the beginning of the street, which has helped. Um, we're here for a few reasons. If you read my email um, with Five Body Circle, we have all kinds of issues, and within the last five years, it's really become safety issue in our, in our area. We've had drug dealers, sexual predators, we have people parking all times of the night. There's one section of our road that's really dark 
at night. I mean, if it's a full moon, the, the road is pretty is is okay. But anytime it's cloud cover or it's not a full moon, you you can park your car there, and it's hard to even see from from Havel Street. So what we get is, I would say, 50 times, 50 percent of the time, I look out my window. Is either kids drinking, urinating in public. So when you, my wife looks out the window, you see these kids urinating. They're partying. There's people changing their kids from the diapers out everywhere, trash everywhere. It's really become an issue. Uh, we've had a sexual predator of late that the police have arrested um, that my wife had to see, which was pretty embarrassing. Um, it's just nonstop. We have. And Barney Circle, if you're familiar with the road, some of the residents on Havel Street have their landscapers come. And all the landscapers take their 20, 30 foot trucks and they park on Barney Circle. They block our driveways. And when we confront them, if they become really agitated and the way the things are today in this world, you're afraid to say anything to people now because it's really become a problem. Um, so we're here for a couple of things. The dead end sign, which thank you very much. Um, I want to talk, I think it was, what was his name? Mike Scoot. Mike Scoot. He was a very nice guy, the safety officer, and he said he'd address the dead end sign, did it right away. We really appreciate that. We have two people that are here tonight. One had to go to a real estate meeting, and one's pretty sick. Um, the other issue is the light. If you look in the beginning of the street, and then at the end of the cul-de-sac, there's a light. But that pot that's really dark, there's another pole right there. We would love to get a, a little street light on there. And that would eliminate any kind of <coughs> issue at night because people won't stay there and party and drink and throw things out. And it's just really gotten to the point now where our cars have been vandalized, our houses have been broken into. I've looked out my window and the people, they're, they're out casing the road because it's really dark there. People go by, they can't even tell they're there. And then I have to turn on the light, I have to say something. Now I'm afraid to even say anything to people because people are violent now, you know? So we're asking the town for some help, or if there's anything we can do to try to help the town, to try to help us get a light there. And we're also looking for, um, we have a big parking issue there with people parking, sleeping, eating lunch, the landscapers, any kind of businesses, anybody in that area on Havel Street, if they haven't worked in their houses, they all tell to bring their trucks and everything on Bonnie Circle. We have little kids that play there. We have four little kids in that street. They can't play in the cul-de-sac when all those trucks are there. It's just not safe. Um, and the other question I had, was, this may be a stupid question because I don't know, but the police had told a certain landscaper they'd gotten an accident that they could park in Bonnie Circle. And he's the guy who always blocks my driveway. So when I confront them on it, it was an issue. So the police came down and said, yeah, he, they can park there, you just can't park in your driveway. Well, my question is, well, he gets in his riding the lawnmower, rides down the sidewalk, crosses Varney Circle. Is that a safe thing? Can they, they allowed to do that? With their riding the lawnmower on the main street? I think so. So to me, it's an issue. And then it's a, a real issue for us on the street, because now we have three or four contractors that are all parking their trucks there. And another side of that, which we're meeting tomorrow night, they're building, they're trying to build two new houses on, I think it's what, 94 and 95 in Angle Street? And when they're doing all their construction, where do you think everything's going to park? By a circle. And then um, it's, it's just become almost intolerable. I've lived there for almost 30 years, and I love it. Raised my kids here. It's a great town. We're really hoping that the town can do something with the light and something about the parking signs. We were kind of thinking that if we could get parking signs that say street <coughs> resident parking only, the people that live on the street can park there because now they're talking about where they're going to build those two houses and there's a meeting on it tomorrow. They're going to put a walkway in there. for con they're, they're looking to make it conservation land. And if that goes in there and it's some kind of walking trail, they've already said, where's the parking going to be? Five Bonnie, sir. I mean, not five Bonnie, sir. Bonnie, sir. So it's really becoming an issue. And we're trying to look for some guidance and some help for what we can do. Yeah. 
first of all, thank you so much for coming and talking okay. to thank us. Thank you for hearing us. I, no, we this really appreciate Peter, it. This is my neighbor. Um, Hello. Yeah. He has all the same concerns, the same with the other. The other two okay. people said they're sorry they couldn't make it, but if we have to come back with four of us, because there's only four houses in that color set. Okay. No, it's, it's what really helpful. I know most of us were taking notes here about the types of issues that we're having. Um, Bob, is this something that the PT... I just want to ask you a question. Sure. Uh, if, you, if you know, I'm not, I know where Varney is. I don't know yeah. this answer. First left as you come up past Camp Lord's it's the turnaround. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned a pole kind of in the middle. Is there a light there that's just not on, or no. is there no light? There's a light in the beginning and a right. light at the end. Because many years ago, there's been some lights that were turned off and just never re-illuminated. No, the, the, two, the two lights that are there, they're there, and they're the new LED type. Okay. And uh, there's a really dark spot there, and okay. that's where we have all our issues. Did yeah. you mention that to my... Uh, yes, so, I did. He okay. said he was going to look into the signs and the lights, yeah. but I never, excuse me, I never heard, I've been really sick for the last three weeks, so I'm kind we of... We have a staff meeting usually uh, every two, three weeks, sometimes monthly, with the holidays we skip the week. Um, that's where he would bring it up to me, so I'm sure I'll hear from him next yeah. week at the next meeting. Yeah. And we, you can tell him we really appreciate it. Okay, I will, thank you. The dead end sign did alleviate some of the issues, but... Yeah, and the light should have. be relatively simple. Um, if Armel owns the poll, yeah, they do. That would eliminate at anything at night because there's no way someone's yeah. going to park there because you can see them from the street. Okay. And I woke up the other night. There were four kids in a car and they were casing out of all the houses. I had to get up, get outside. And it's very unsafe for me to do that. And I have to turn on all my lights. Then they're looking yeah. at me like I'm the issue. And I'm afraid they're going to come back. It's not like it used to be years ago where you could talk to somebody and say, hey, you can't do that. Mm. So I don't even address it anymore. Okay. So yeah, but, and then we had the sexual predator, and then he got arrested, and it's it's just gotten to the point where it's out of hand because, sorry, Pete, where the turnaround in Reading there is, we're the first we're yeah. the first street where people can turn around, and we right. get you have no idea the type of people that come down there. They park, they eat their lunch, throw their stuff out. Yeah, and at first it wasn't bad. We pick it up; it's not a big deal. But now it's to the point where it's just crazy. Yeah. So if we could get like street resident parking only, we realize. That people, if we have visitors over, they can't park there, they have to park in our driveway. We're willing to put up with that because it's that much of a problem. So, anything the town can do to help us, we really so I, I think I, I want to make sure that the town, Bob, do you know, or Marks, if you've been communicating, the town has the contact information for our here? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, so I sent an email to Mr. Dark. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I also want to encourage you when that happens, when there are cars parked there doing questionable things. Um, please don't endanger yourself. Please call the police. Let I them know. know. They'll send someone out there. Happy with the to police. Do. But the issue is, is we look at it as there's more things the police could be doing. I understand, but it's like I'd be calling the police if that light's there. I won't be calling. And if I, if I if I did call, I'd be calling them all the time. I'd be like one of those neighbors that oh here he is again. You know. We and would I rather spend that. My whole life I think I can. Out my window to do that. Yeah, you know, I can right. safely tell you that if you became one of those people, they'd still come every time. I, I know that. <laughs> I have nothing bad to say to anybody at the yeah. town. They've been excellent. So anything you can do or anything okay. we can do, yeah. you know. So we'll, we'll absolutely look into the light. Um, the town staff meeting, um, we'll look into some of the other issues as far as the parking goes because there's a, there's a couple different things that you've mentioned that I think merit some further discussion. So. Um, We'll make sure we reach out to you, Bob. Can you make sure that someone gives yep. them status updates as to the progress? Yeah, you'll hear from probably Mike Scout. And we appreciate you listening to us. It's, Absolutely. You know, I'm, we've I'm glad you're here. We've been putting up with it for years, but it just got to the point where we have to do Yeah, I hadn't heard about the light one. I had heard about most of the well, other things. Well, I had talked to Mike. Okay. And he was going to bring it up. Okay, yeah, and I'm sure he will. Yeah. Okay. Just look so, up. So, sorry. Just, uh, sure. I thought to add, you know, the central activity two months ago, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, plane. Plain sight, right? While my wife is going, getting my kids from kill them. So it's second grade, a fourth grade, a neighbor had a fifth grade, you know, girl too. So it's right in the middle of the day. You know, we're we're, we we're, we're, night, we're very yeah night, yeah. yeah. We're very concerned. So this happening, like, you know, thing, you know, daylight, and my wife's you know coming back with the kids. Yeah, we have some serious issues. I don't think it's yeah, a normal street either yeah. because of the highway and all the right. different people we get. Yeah, they it's don't traffic area. So there's a, there's a couple questions from the board. So Anne, I'll go to you first. Um, this is about a, this going back to something else. So uh, okay. I'm, let's. So we'll table that. Appreciate your comments. Let's fine. stay on this for the moment. Yeah, but one of the things I'm wondering if we could um, increase patrol a little bit also. Um, yeah, they know they've been there, but. 
know, some of the things like people park and have lunch, I'm just not sure why. <laughs> it, it's really strange. I don't you know, know if it's with contractors and workers, around. then I might see people, that. I, we get people all the time. There'll be four or five cars come down. We yeah. their bikes. I mean, yeah. take their bikes off. You go right. I said, can't you park them down right the, by the lake? And then quick. I have no idea what's going yeah. on. Yeah, we're, we're taking business meetings. We can come off as a nature. I'll, I'll walk up there this night yeah. and yeah. say, hey, you know, are you okay? You lost your help, right? <laughs> Because you don't know these days, yeah. right? You just don't know. You want to approach them in a respectful manner, right? right? And sometimes people are nice. Sometimes they get belligerent, right? Yeah. I say, hey, you know, around the corner, area, a big parking lot, Dunkin' Donuts, a lot of space over there. We have young kids over here. We just don't know where you are. I'm sorry, right? right? Sometimes people are respectful. Sometimes they're belligerent. Don't pull down the windows. You know what I mean? You go on. I'll go inside. I'm like, okay, you know what? Fine. I'll just call police, right? And then tell them right. later. Then they'll move on, you know. Right. I mean? But sometimes people are nice and understand that, and sometimes they'll stop fighting with us. To this point, you don't know these days. Right. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm right over here. Yeah. So Come back. You know what I mean? Into whatever it is. Thank you for your comment, John. Yeah. I know you had a question. I, well, yeah. Just a just a quick comment. I I do know because I've since we've started hearing from you, I've taken a ride down there. That parking issue. I've seen the the uh, landscapers, you know, in your neighborhood. In other parts of town, we've been able to do a resident, I say resident only, you had to have a, a Reading sticker mm -hmm. to park on the street so that when your guests come, you put your cars out on the street. Yeah. And well, you know, that's why we said, is, it, is there a way it could be like street resident pocket so it's just the people on the street? We've done that a couple of places. Over by the high school baseball field was a yeah, the similar problem. So we can have the yeah. staff certainly look into that and what the options are. Yeah, that would really help. Uh, yeah. I appreciate so, it. I think the light is the back. first thing. So, Bill, you the have a comment? would, would yeah. be okay. amazing. Yeah. I mean, we can't tell you enough. Okay. You know? um, Wonderful. Thank you so much Thanks for coming. For coming. Thank you for talking to us. Right? And we'll be circling back with you. Thanks, yeah. Bill. Uh, if they put up a left hand turn coming off the road, that would help too. There's many places in the state that do that. Mm -hmm. Like if they run out in the middle of the profession, yeah. about uh, 495, you can't take a left hand turn and make that turn around. Okay. Thanks for that suggestion, Bill. So, Bob, the PTTT app yeah, take yeah, that I was up. trying to find the next meeting and I couldn't find it, but we'll talk about okay. it. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Um, all right, so if there's no other public comment, uh, oh, and I know Nancy has left, but I just wanted to piggyback on something that Andy said about the pesticide um, regulations. My understanding of the status, and maybe Andy has more updated information, was from an email that we all were forwarded from Emmy at the end of November, and my understanding was that that, that the Board of Health had made some amendments in response to all the comments mm -hmm. that we had provided and that they had incorporated incorporated them into a draft that had been sent to town council and that the current status is that it's with town mm -hmm. council or that was where my understanding as to where it was at the end of november and i don't know if it's um if, if that's come I back to us um, if, it, if it's come back to us since then i haven't seen it okay so but, and one of two and things. I can also reach out to, since Nancy's no longer here and this was her concern, I can, yeah. um, I'll reach out to her. So to I her think as a, that's my understanding. I think as a broader yeah. note, um, Nancy, if you're watching from home, <laughs> we are aware, we will look into it and we yes. will circle back and in our yes. next meeting at a minimum we'll have an update on where we stand. Perfect. I, you guys have killed well, Never mind. Well, this is a good report. So, you folks, are, we appreciate your coming. You are welcome to stay as long as you want, and also as short as you want. So, just to make sure you understand, no, no you you are under no obligation. Once you you've made your point, we we appreciate it. If you need a nap, stick around. We'll put you right to sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. All right. So, I, I um, think Bill wanted to talk about okay. um, Peter Fantasia. Okay. I think he forgot. Yeah, Bill. I'll find out what's funny. Bill, Bill, in your public comment, did you forget about what happened here yesterday afternoon? Oh, yes. Did you forget about what happened here yesterday afternoon? Oh, yes. <laughs> we just have to mention Peter Please Fantasia. Please go right. I think it's yes. Yeah. We <laughs> celebrated here um, kind of a joint effort of Congressman Moulton tracking down all of his appropriate um, awards and ribbons. Peter Fantasia is a World War II veteran. Um, birthday coming up. He's only 103 now. Will be 104 uh, very shortly. Um, this was quite a scene in here, um, as yeah. Andy and Mark will. Uh, you know, uh, the congressman one by one reissued all of his medals to him, which were then 
pinned on his chest, which was really fabulous. Um, and then uh, Brad Jones and um, Rich Haggerty um, brought greetings from the State House, which was also really nice. And a hell of a handshake. He, mm -hmm. He'll shake your hand and have a conversation with you. Two years ago, the board um, celebrated his birthday at his home at the, at the Artist Center. Um, and I sat down with him and I said, so 102, 104, this is becoming a regular thing. You know, what do you want to do? Yeah, what do you want to do next year? He goes, I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, he was, he, he's just a, he, he's a really wonderful man who has quite a history. And um, there's all kinds, I just got a, I got a, a message from a friend of mine, who, uh, my best friend, who's a Marine Corps veteran from the Midwest, who picked it up on an AP huh. with a photograph, you know, writing Massachusetts honors, and it's mm. uh, so it was really it was it was cool. Huh? I mean, you guys. Yeah, were I, I I think we should point out that um, he, he had a particularly um, traumatic service in that he was a medic in the North African campaign and in the European in France and a prisoner of war. And then and then he then then but but seeing the horrors that you see as a medic. He had to go through that. It's a dangerous job, and then he got taken prisoner by the Germans, and then he was sort of posted by the Russians for a while after the war. So he, he really he, he uh, served some and and then some more. Yeah. Wonderful guy. Thank you for mentioning that, John. Uh, so next up on our agenda, we have um, we'll be appointing some volunteers to boards, committees, and commissions. Um, Andy and I met as volunteer appointment subcommittee, um, and we do have recommendations. The one exception that I will make is that I will recommend um, Andy did have to recuse himself from one recommendation for the cultural council, and so that recommendation um, is specific to me alone. Um, so I don't have motions for Mark, so I will read them myself. Um, then we will do them. Uh, Bob, do you have a preference on whether we do these each one at a time or by committee? By committee. Whatever you want. All right. Let's do them committee by committee. So we'll start with conservation. Um, so move to appoint um, to the conservation committee uh, Martha Moore for a term ending June 2021 uh, to a full membership position. John Sullivan to a full member position uh, ending in a term June 2020. Nancy Tay Evans Rhodes to an associate position ending June 2021. Um, Nicola Meserve to an associate position ending uh, June 2021, and Scott Keefe to an associate position ending 20, June 2020, and all of these are June 30th, 2020. Is there a second? Just a question. Oh, and the, is this because people have stepped down? Just yes. So it's obvious this is very short, so, so they're filling out somebody. We're, there are two full member positions uh -huh. and four vacant associate positions we are filling the two full and the three vacant. So are the two actually empty now, or are these people leaving and not? They are currently empty. Wow. Yeah. So conservation was really um, hurting for mm. members and was struggling making quorum. So this is um, this was the priority. We still have one additional vacancy, and it's worth noting um, since there were so many that um, there were two individuals that Martha and John who specifically requested the full member positions. There were two people who specifically requested the associate positions. And then just based on qualifications and experience, professional experience, Andy and I placed the other, the remaining one. Second. Great. Um, thank you. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Thank you. So, next up for the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, we have moved to appoint James Mon as an associate to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term ending in June 2020. And that is the only one. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Well, which one of the... Uh, Bob, uh, ZBA. 
Bob? Um, <clears throat> I don't know what you discussed, but there is a full membership available now. We, we, we all got the copy of that resignation dated, I think, the 7th, just so you know. I think. That's true. Um, what we want to keep him is. I, wasn't there an associate that we were going to move up into that full position? Uh, Hillary Mateen, yes. But that, um, we haven't had a chance to discuss that, and I think we should discuss it with her before we move that. But I think oh, at a I minimum... I thought we we'll just decided for her. <laughs> <laughs> um, ZBA can work that out. I just wanted to make sure you remembered that there's now a vacancy, because there wasn't one you met. Who resigned? That is true. John Jerry. John Jerry Murray. Yeah. And he had said he wanted to resign as soon as they found him. So, right. so right did. now, <laughs> what we could do is um, Hillary could remain as an associate, and Jamie can remain as an associate, and the chair can elevate them. Yes. The ZBA... Is there uh, there are enough associates? It's CPDC that's limited. CPDC right, is limited. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I would say since we haven't had a, uh, as a courtesy, I feel like we should reach out to Hillary. Okay. To uh, and we can always uh, yes. appoint her as a full member. Yes. On yeah. Members. Or Jamie if she's not so interested. Or exactly. And in the interim, because you've got the associates, they can be elevated. Yeah, they can be elevated yeah. for yes. activity. Yes. Perfect. So. Okay. Um, there was also another applicant, uh, Heather Klish, but we are recommending her for CPDC. So if you're yes. looking at the paperwork and wondering why, that was the not too good. Um, So we have a motion. Do we have a second? I second. Thank you. Um, and any further discussion? All those in favor? I'm in, I am in favor. Just wondering what paperwork. Bob, has the rest of the... I don't think anything went with that. Nothing went in the no. packet. We don't have it. We don't, we don't have what you, what you have there. Okay. Um, can we forward that to them now just so that they have it? I don't have it, so. I, 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 so it'll be after the meeting. <laughs> yeah. Or we can, we can forward, right? Why, why doesn't Bob forward after? I can Caitlin? give everyone a copy of this after. It's just the list of names. Just the list of the names. You can see the names. Let's do that. All right. Thank you, Caitlin. All right. Um, next, we have CPDC, Community Planning and Development Commission. Move to appoint Heather Klish to the full member position um, with term ending June 2020. Is there a second? Second. Questions? All those in favor? Uh, board of Trustees, uh, Board of Cemetery Trustees. Um, there was one applicant. There are currently four vacant positions. Wow. Um, we'll fill in one, so we still have three more. If anyone is interested or if you know anyone, um, they're a great group to work with. Uh, so move to appoint Susan Darling True uh, to an associate position ending June 2021. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. I, I don't believe we have any vacancies on the board. Might be a, board there are associate, might be associate members. Oh, okay. Yeah, all associate yeah. positions. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a second. Uh, all those in favor? Great. All right. We did conservation. Great. So cultural council, um, and again, Andy abstained from this one, so my recommendation. Um, move to appoint Francis Barba Boyle to an associate position ending June 2021. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Um, and there is actually one other associate. Oh, I didn't vote. I raised my hand, but I didn't. Okay. I meant not to vote. It wasn't a voting scratch. Right. It, <laughs> was, it was just a, a, a tick. Okay. Came all in tech. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Andy abstains from that one. All right. So those are all the appointments that we have for tonight. Um, moving on to the preview of the 2020 annual town meeting. Thank you. I'll be quick. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> town meeting starts on April 27th, it's a little late this year. Right now it looks like there may be 17 articles. Um, there's some standard articles that I won't even review. Um, the only really additional work, there's no zoning, there's no uh, bylaw amendments proposed. There are a number of debt authorizations, so most of what you're going to see at town meeting is either recurring business or financially oriented. It's actually one of the simpler, if you will, town meetings that I've seen in a while. We, we, yes, we, we, we have a goal, which is once we did do a one-day annual town meeting, so I'm not saying we'll do it again, but that's the goal. Yeah. 
And again, this is um, there's a lot of death authorization. <coughs> One of these may drop off. I'll have to read something from Jane that she sent a little while ago. Uh, <coughs> most of this is going to be simple um, and fast. Yeah, fit simple. Yes, fast. Okay, mm. it is simple. Sounds like a unicorn. Um, so that's, uh, that's it. And then the budget, uh, I'm still working on mine. John has presented one to the school committee. They'll vote at the end of the month. Um, I don't know if the bu bu budgets will end up being very complicated either. We'll hope for the best. So it's, it's a pretty straightforward town meeting as I see it. Is, is this the extent of what you see on your radar screen? Though? For April, yeah. Because you're going to have to close the warrant in a month. So. I should have asked permission to speak. <laughs> Why start now? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm really not. But, um, I think that we should be, and I was going to save this for the end, but because we're here, sure. I think we should be thinking about either talking to conservation, authorizing some money. We need to look at that property. Mm -hmm. um, that we recently acquired to understand from a conservation standpoint, usability standpoint. I mean, what are the things that we can do and where can we do it? Yep. And I think so. that it's a good idea for us to get something into this town meeting sure. so that it doesn't mm -hmm. languish. Um, when I get to the budget discussion, I think I'll address that. And I don't think we need any town meeting action right now other than oh, to approve okay. money. Yeah. So that's um, part of the capital plan. I've, I've made up a number of 100,000 for Simon's Way. Yeah. Um, we know we need to hire a wetland scientist. We need to survey the property. We need to stake out. I think it's 14 acres. We guess that four or five are dry and the rest is wet. So that's what that money would be to start the process. So you've hidden it somewhere else. It's I, in the that's all I, I didn't I don't want think the town meeting has to authorize it other than a financial expenditure because you're not really asking them to do anything else right. at this point. I'm I just didn't say, want it all that time to go and by. And I'm just going to clarify, not hidden, but appropriately <laughs> put in. <laughs> Place in the Again, <laughs> I misspeak as usual, but you have to only tolerate this a little while longer. And will they... It's uh, three meeting more meetings, but who's counting? Wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, Bob, the obviously our CONSCOM and Conservation Commissioner can't do this themselves because it would be right. a conflict of interest. Uh, I'm not sure that they have the expertise. They may, but they, we'd always outsource that. And so, okay. And, and, and but the, the consultant will keep them in the loop of what's happening. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I um, and I, I have a second question I'll slip in since they're not paying attention. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, when would you like our feedback on the on the budget by the next agenda item <laughs> I mean that's that's when we'll talk about it so so in five minutes in five minutes <laughs> all right on that we'll head back to Bob want to go back to the next agenda item <laughs> anything else on town meeting okay um, I wrote you a few pages on the budget um, I just want to hit some high spots and I'll, I'll answer your question specifically Andy. Um, since we met in December, there's a couple things that are different. I'll describe one of them tonight. Uh, the ladder truck needs to be replaced sooner than we had originally thought. The ladder trucks historically have been budgeted at 20 years. Um, fire engines are kept for 20 years, 10 years in front line, 10 years backup ladder. We only have one. Um, we are finding with the increased usage, especially, and probably they don't make things like they used to, that 15 years is all we're going to get out of a ladder truck. Um, so I, I've talked a lot to the department and I've agreed to move that up. Um, we're getting a better estimate. We had a placeholder of a million three. We, we know that's right order magnitude. But in order to move that up, not to FY21, but to FY22, other things had to move around. That's a big number to suddenly fit into a, a capital plan. So I described some of the moving pieces. They agreed to move the ambulance back a year. Some DPW equipment moved up a year. Um, when all the moving is said and done, um, there really is no surplus identified in the capital plan for the next two years, except we may, depending on snow and ice, we may be in a position to ask for some more capital this spring. Now, I'll have to think more about that because we used a lot of money at the November town meeting for the uh, portable classrooms, the modular classrooms. 
Um, so I don't, I'll have to work with FinCom and see what their appetite is. We do have healthy free cash, but I can't say how much could be spent. But, but moving up something that might be scheduled, for instance, from FY21 to next spring creates an opportunity in FY21 to do something different. Um, I can't really answer that question on my own. Um, I will be presenting to FinCom, unless something else changes, a balanced budget that shows a balanced capital plan for the next two years because of the fire engine. Um, but to, specifically to answer uh, Andy's question, um, your feedback is welcome all month. Um, other than the first week or so of the budget discussions, I haven't heard from anyone. I incorporated um, two of the things I heard into the budget. Um, I would say sooner than later for sure, mm -hmm. because I need to balance a budget. I mean, I have one now that's within $40,000 of being balanced. Yeah. If you have a new idea, I need to know about it. Mm -hmm. So maybe we get another coin made up with a ladder truck on the <laughs> Yeah, right. Truck it out in the street. It, it, it doesn't look like it's going to get drawn by horses all day. <laughs> right. Uh, so here's, here's the Simon's Way thing, John, um, FY21. $100,000 just for, I called it Simon's Way Development Work. Great. And that's one of the things I added because I think it was maybe Mark that mentioned it during the budget discussion. Can I have a comment on that if I could? Um, I know there's a discussion in here about um, REC wanting to be an active participant, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll get to this later also. I view this as a much bigger picture than just REC. Yep. So I think a lot of people want to talk. Trials Committee, Recreation. And uh, conservation Cost. at a minimum. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm thinking potentially even broader, so it's more community. Well, that would be kind of the first blush, and then once you sort of delineate the land and maybe identify who wants what, then you're definitely going to want more participants for sure. Great. So what? Yeah, great. So Paul, why don't you continue? Um, there's not really a lot to add. Um, uh, you know, capital has been primarily my focus since December. Um, and cutting out all the exorbitant requests by the department heads, which I told you I'd cut. Um, there were four, depending how you looked at it, three or four new positions requested. The reason I'm not sure is because one of them was probably an outsource thing for the facilities. And my priority, as I outlined in here, was the benefits position first. And we can easily afford that. It's a $10 million health insurance budget. And then a, tr a tree climber position second, as well as uh, increasing the funding for trees. Um, those are both going to be in a balanced budget. Whether anything more can fit in right now, I don't think so in terms of the request for facilities. Um, it's unfortunate that if Joe's watching right now, this is how he's learning of it, but I'll catch up to him. He gave a budget presentation to the school committee last night, so I just haven't caught up to him. Um, Bob, if I could... It's, again, a pretty simple budget. It's not a complicated one with you know, two, two additional positions. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know about the others, but it would be, you know, I'm thinking last year's override and uh, we hired uh, um, a number of new staff because of the override and trying to be aware of keeping that override uh, going for as long as possible. Um, it would be helpful to me to see um, that, you know, the total number of, uh, uh, of um, people that are employed uh, in the various departments and seeing if, if so for example, if we, if we add these two positions, mm -hmm. will, it, will it not change the overall number of FTEs in town? It would add two. It would add two. Yeah. I mean, right now, one of the concerns, thoughts at the override was um, the language of the ballot question was a guarantee for the first year, but not thereafter. Mm -hmm. The town will do X with the money, and it only was for the first year. Oh, Bill left. Um, all the positions that were added are maintained. Um, none are eliminated. Yeah. Five police officers, four firefighters are still there. Um, I can do a summary, but all the positions that were described as needed were filled and are still in the budget. Yeah. That answers your question. Yeah. These two positions are different. I think different. This is, I don't want to go far afield, but I think it's a little broader. I think it would be very helpful to me as well to be able to um, see kind of a, a map of FTEs over time. Yeah, just we, so have, we can we'll have that. Yep. Great. Yeah, I think as soon as you have it, it'd be great to share with us. I'd, I'd love to be, okay. kind of dig into that a little bit too. Yeah, I think all the departments presented that to you one at a time, but you didn't see it. 
one yeah. one department uh, didn't. We were okay. we were short one. Okay. Um, but I think a three or four year look back might be nice. Yeah, maybe five three. if you have yeah. the data, but three yeah. I think would be at a minimum. Three, yeah, at least three backward, the current, and then the future okay. plan. Right. Well, it's not as good. simple as it seems. Victor, right. for instance, is not an FTE. I see him; he's a person. Right. So, well, right. yeah, you, you don't have many people that are expenses, but he's he's a good example of one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess, um, yeah. That's that's my concern is is that if we keep growing town hall staff, um, and then we once we hire them, they are long. You know, we have them. They're intended to be here for a while. It's a cost that we incur year after year after year. Um, so I, I just want to be conservative in that front, um, looking down the road for. Okay. Yeah, we, we added um, a full-time uh, assistant town accountant for Sharon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We added right. a software person, and that was all in town hall. Yeah. And then this benefits position would be in town hall. So. Right, but the 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 other the assistant for Sharon that was from the with the override, yes, correct, and discussed yeah. as part correct. of the override, mm -hmm. yeah, and discussed as part of the override. Yep. Okay, um, I won't go over all the capital plans, but I've kind of outlined areas. Many of them involve capital, where the community is going to have a discussion. I still don't know how the format of all this is going to work, but what we've learned in the past is to make sure we we fill the table with as many things as we can think of and then discuss them at a, at a high level at a broad level you know, many elected boards many uh, many other participants so that there's no surprise there always will be but at least you've had that chance to discuss them. Yeah, to be a little bit to be even more explicit mm -hmm. can you sit in, is, are these areas that could require a potential future debt extension um, some of them yes some of them no um, so just to go through them, um, elementary school space, yes, absolutely. Um, that'll be a number that can't be supported by the tax levy, almost no matter what they choose. And, and my understanding, and I need to catch up to John, is um, he plans to give an update at November town meeting of where they stand in terms of a you know, process. November 2020. Yes. Um, and he may be able to give one in April, I just don't know, but he definitely will give one by, by November. Um, streetscape, I don't imagine that's going to be a debt exclusion, but I also know we can't do all the work that has been identified. Uh, energy efficiency is not a debt exclusion. Athletics recreation, we do have $10 million worth of projects that are not funded. They could be done by a debt exclusion. We also have room in the capital plan in, in the out years so that we might fit them in there. It's really a question of is any of these urgent enough? And, and I know. Um, I will give you my priority because I heard it from years ago. I don't know if it's currently what the schools would say. Is that uh, the stadium turf and track repairs is first, but the field house uh, bleachers and floor are very close second because they're both safety issues. Um, and that's you know five million dollars, which we can borrow and we can spread out the cost over a period of time. Um, you know, do we really want to use free cash? I don't know. I think everything else in the list is. Much. Five million between the two projects. Yeah, the, the field lighting also stands stands as an important one, but the other things are further away. Um, turf work at Parker and a new turf field cooler wish lists. I would have to say, Parker Field seems like it's in pretty good shape. That's what I hear from facilities. Um, Simon's Way. It's too early to know what might happen there. That could potentially involve a debt exclusion and pretty much similar with the community slash senior slash youth center. Um, we don't know, even really know what that means and that's gonna need more discussion. And then uh, DPW garage, again, that's, that's always thought to be a complex financial situation. Um, we're working with our federal partners right now to try to figure out some of the angles. Um, we know that if this goes forward, we will not be buying land the federal government will not sell us land, but they would uh, engage in a 99-year lease. Um, with a community partner such as Wakefield, should it happen the way we're discussing, the financing gets a little tricky. So um, they have discussed previously putting Reading in charge of all the money and just send them a bill, which is probably the easiest thing to do. Um, it's too soon to say, I can't say for sure it won't require a debt exclusion, but I, I'm hoping that it doesn't. We're trying to work around that. But what it might involve 
is to <coughs> dedicating revenues from economic development to pay the debt service for a little while and having the community not enjoy that new economic development for a while. That's, that's one way to avoid debt exclusion, for instance. Um, but the concept and the numbers are just too far away to go much further. And those are the only things I see as something that's, you know, a desire and in some cases a pretty urgent need in the community uh, on the bigger level that needs funding. The rest of our equipment and buildings, I think, are in pretty good shape. You just, you know, the fire truck, the fire engine, the ladder truck is a little bit of a surprise, but when you saw the repair bill, it's like, okay. And again, the concern isn't a financial one, it's a safety one. We're building big buildings, it'd be nice to have a lot of trouble. So that's, that's really the summary. But if the board has thoughts, I'd, I'd really like to get them in the next week to 10 days. That would be most helpful. Um, all right, so it's 8.15. Uh, I want to be sensitive to time here because at 8.30 we have our, sort of, what we're calling the strategy discussion here. Um, but there's still three other items on our agenda. The onboarding manual, an update, on the town manager goals and a review of the town manager evaluation form. Um, so what I'd like to do is we can pick one of these off of the agenda and move the other two to the end. Um, is there any reason to believe any of these will affect our strategy discussion? I don't believe so, but um, then I'm going to suggest we get the onboarding, onboarding annual could because it talks about the role of liaisons. Um, Some well. I'm open to suggestions. Uh, if we stay with kind of what we discussed here, the, the session we're going to have is more creating a list, a whiteboard okay. list, not really evaluating them at this point right. or prioritizing them or anything else. Right. So if your concern was we'd have to get rid of something in order to add something, <laughs> if that's what your concern was, um, it may be that that's better dealt with kind of when we're, we're going through things, a meeting or two hence. Yeah, I have. I, Bob, uh, I don't need to cover the uh, town manager goals at all. It's really at your pleasure. I've given you a rather long document to read. So if there's any questions or any comments or concerns, I'd always welcome them. Um, given the nature of your discussion, now that I, I really understand it, I had thought this was important to lead into yours, but I don't really think it is. Okay. I think this is more important when you get to action. I agree. So I'm going to suggest, given this discussion, um, that we review the town manager evaluation form uh, because that will put us in line to actually evaluate him since we have um, we are a bit behind on that. Uh, so Mark, over you. So I put into the packet, and this is what it would look like if you printed it out without all the changes and things like that, so it's a much more manageable document. The board asked me, uh, actually in November, to simplify the front part of the of the form, and if you go to just open it, I'll find page forty six. Is that where this is? So forty six is uh, you can see the changes that were made. So that's the uh, crossed out version, and then if you scroll to the bottom of that, you'll find the cleaner version. Okay, I get that I'm old, but forty six. Really it is. No, it is. <laughs> so. I have one copy we can share that I printed out. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll just blow it up. Well, let me explain kind of what, what the board had asked me instead of having... I'm going to go get your packet online. Oh, great. Okay. Instead of having all of the... Uh, for each of the goals in each of the sections up front to provide a, a score on each one of those, instead to remove all of that and just ask for comments specific to the goals. So where we used to have proficient, et cetera, that's all removed, and now it's just comments in the first sections. And that goes through all of the goals all the way until town manager's, per, town manager's performance rating for standard. And then we discussed moving to a five-point scale, and I took that literally, and I used points one, two, three, four, and five. And then I define one would be exemplary, five would be unsatisfactory. And it allows for a rating on each of the categories and an overall rating, again, one through five, with comments. <coughs> so this was in response to the board's request to just simplify the form dramatically. So the first part, we're just giving comments. We're not Correct. We're not giving a number. And then we go into the numerical rank. Right. 
Correct. So very specifically, it says goal community goal number one, senior center outreach and pre preliminary planning. Mm -hmm. There's a space for comments. Mm -hmm. Right. Same thing for each of the goals. In the community. Score. So yes. Good. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So each of the categories, so community, there are seven goals. <laughs> then finance, there are goals. Operations, there are goals. Yeah. Okay. Can, Can we I finish that? Question, Mark? Sure. So when we start to, I'm assuming we're going to be able to do these online. Yes. So they're, you know, a form's going to be document. open. Yeah, it's a Word document. Yep. Will these spaces open up as we continue to write? Uh, they should. And I'm just, we're going to, it's yeah. a small thing, but, the, yeah. You know. so, so the answer is they don't right now, but I'm agreeing with you. They should. Okay. So with a little bit of formatting magic, I think we can make that happen. Yep. Great. When you finish that, Oh, and sorry, at the end of each section, let's say operations, there are four goals, comments, then there's an overall operations, goals, comments area. So if you have broader comments about it, you're able to put that there. So this allows for a lot of just comments, what's happening. I'm not sure if I'm looking at the, the I, I see four categories, or I see four categories of, of, of rating rather than five. Um, you got to keep going down for Okay. So I've got 54. community. Finance, operations, did I steal one? Community finance, operations, and policy. So where's policy? Community, finance, operations. Yeah, so policy should definitely be there as well. Finance, right. Community, finance, And we do have rankings starting on page 54, where it starts with leadership and professional culture, as an example. Yeah, those are sort of like the core um, yeah. Yeah. competencies that yeah. we yeah. had before. And then management and operations. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this looks great. Yeah, I do too. So it's it's using points one, two, three, four, and five as the as the scoring, which allowed for. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. only thing that confused me was so I understand. I'm just looking on page 56. It's community engagement. Um, we the the rankings here at the top in blue make sense. That's one through five. Is there a reason why they're laid out horizontally here above the comment section? Yes. That is the overall rating for the category. So you circle one. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so it's each goal. category it has its own formatting. Got it. total. It's a total, okay. basically. It's not really add up these three and strike an average. You actually have a sense of in this box. I think it's a three or a five or a one. Um, and, and then room to describe yeah. comments. Any. This okay. is actually really yeah. A really I think this is great. Big yeah, big improvement. I'm confused because it goes on uh, after. So, so what happens on page, page 57, now? 58. It starts over with town manager town manager evaluation. This is where I got confused. And this, this might be. I think this was the previous version. Yeah. Can you um, could you start on page 58? That's the the second section here, which is the. I believe. No, nope, sorry, I have it backward. I'm looking at the wrong one. That looks like the old one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that was starting the... on page 58, and yeah. then 59. Yeah, that was the previous version. I think yep. that's the old version yeah. that yep. got attached sorry, to this. At least that's what it looks yep. like. Yeah. Did I end up putting in the same one twice? That would be a drag. <laughs> no, no, no. I just think this is the, the the old version, the previous version so that you changed. Just as a point of clarification, I'm going to specify which pages are the current recommended. Uh, let's see. So it starts on page 50. And goes to 57, I think. And it goes to 57. Yes. Sorry. Okay. That is the, the new proposed version. Okay. Uh, I think it's great as is. Any other? All right. Thank so the next are. thing. Yeah. Thank I you, Mark. for taking that on, Mark. Um, so the next thing I would like to discuss just under this item is the timeline. So, uh, and it's possible we have to revisit this, but um, I recommend that we pursue the evaluation and have it completed. So we have three more meetings before the election. Um, and I recommend that we do the evaluation before then. Oh, well, that's right, I'm gonna make it work now. Mm. <laughs> um, well, I, I'm glad that we're going to get this done it, before then, because we're only like we're only four months behind. Yeah. Um, so, uh, looking at the calendar, that would mean that using a clean version, 
of Mark's evaluation form, mm -hmm. all feedback would need to be provided um, to, are we doing Judy Perkins again, Bob? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, so we have a meeting on the 21st. That is too soon. I believe we have one on the 4th and the 11th, 11th. Bob. Is that correct? Right. 21, 4, and 11. So I would recommend that we have all feedback to Judy by the 24th. Does that seem reasonable to everyone? Of what month? Of January. So that's uh, two, two and a half weeks. weeks. When do you want to do this? On the 4th? You want to, you know. It's either the 4th or the 11th, Bob. Um, I'll work with you on this, but Andy and Dan may rest in peace. Um, <laughs> He's resting right now. Remember last year He's at this time he now. was considered deceased by someone in the room. Yes. Expired. <laughs> right, expired. <laughs> um, worked very hard on this and I, I just want to remind the board one of the uh, aspects that you know, I know Andy emphasized was some sort of an opportunity to have a collaborative discussion before it got to a public meeting. Mm -hmm. I'll certainly do my best to make time for all of you but putting it into August versus now is quite a difference in terms of busyness for all of us so I'll do the best I can but I really do want to provide you all an opportunity to do that and I probably want it myself um, if it just doesn't work out we'll take a mulligan for this year I understand it's a little late we'll do the best we can um, I just remind the board that the, that subcommittee did a lot of work and it was good work and going forward I think their framework is very helpful and there was a reason they picked some of the dates they did yes and I think, and to that, um, just quickly, it, it, what Dan and I had in mind was that <coughs> instead of, if, if you had a um, concern that you wanted to bring uh, with Bob, um, that you bring it up uh, throughout the year, not, not in this evaluation. So um, I think in, in the spirit of what Dan and I intended, try to, um, your, your comments should be based on conversations you've had with Bob or emails you've had with Bob. Great. Um, question about process um, and what's public and what's not. So we send our, our evaluation forms to Judy. Are they then, um, are the comments then compiled and is it, um, Want me to just give you the rundown? Yes, thank okay. you. <laughs> uh, so all the comments would be sent to Judy by January 24th, which is Friday. She compiles them into one large document. Okay. It's usually broken down by sections. She would take all five comments for section one, put them together with our name associated with them. Okay. Um, in the previous year, when she when we had um, <coughs> ranked, so the, the one through five, an average was taken um, okay. and presented along with the individual rankings of each member for the sections that are one through five. I don't remember. I remember it's kind of a town council question. I'll so ask. the previously what um, one board member had done it, but a couple of years ago it was determined that um, that would be considered a violation of open meeting law, and so therefore a staff member had to do it. Uh, and so once that is compiled and included in a packet, that is now part of the public record. Um, it goes to all of us and it is posted on them. Okay. Oh. Yeah, and, and the other twist was your comments to the, the HR director in this case are, are HIPAA protected. They're an HR document. So what she has to produce has to pass muster with town council from that angle too. And I just don't remember. I remember there were some twists based on a, on a case that was arbitrated. Yeah. Um, but what kind not of HIPAA, well, not privacy. privacy? Yeah, not HIPAA. I was privacy. Say, what, yeah. Employment privacy. Sorry. Employment privacy. Any of your yes. personal medical? I don't have access yeah, to your yeah, personal yeah, medical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your name again? You didn't get that yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just want to make sure Judy talks with Ray and just understands. Okay. Is this going to jam? I mean, I can get mine done. The so in soon plenty of time. But if you need all. to visit and extend that, if if any of you get it done sooner, I can visit with you sooner. Put it that way. So you understand what I'm saying? As flexible as possible. I mean, mine will be done. Right. Okay. Um, so I should. So we should assume then. We should assume that what we write will be um, with our name on it, and that will be visible to the public and to Bob. 
but know that there may be some exceptions that don't, that I, I don't think so. I, I think actually the document you each create, this is from memory, um, you send to HR and then it ceases being a document. She then creates a new document with how, whatever the rules are on that and I don't, it was I don't compiled. want to say. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then whatever information is in that document is a public document and the old ones are thrown in an employment file. Okay. Um, I get a, obviously have a right to see those, sure. and that's why I would then have a dialogue with all of you sure. to discuss whatever it is you know, we need to discuss, <laughs> yeah. which I'm happy to do in whatever format you want. Yeah. So Traditionally, we've done that. Um, we've put them all together, and then we've discussed them as, as a board. Yeah. So um, just revisiting the calendar before we move on, um, at by the latest, Jan Friday, January 24th, have the feedback, have the completed form into Judy. Um, what I would like to ask is, Mark, can you please send that work, the working version to Caitlin and Bob um, cleaned up, if you would be so kind? How about the unworking version, asking for help? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think I ever saw it. You is it the second version? Is that what you're using? Yes. The, the, no changes? The only change is, uh, I think what John suggested is a very good idea so that uh, if you type into a box, it expands as you type. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that you don't suddenly type and realize that you've, you're now on, you've covered 15 pages because. You've got to shrink it to 10 words. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's. Or, or so it needs to be an extension. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we can offline talk okay. a little bit about that. I, I think it's, it's doable. Um, you sent Caitlin and I two, two documents. One was with the word updates, one was suggestions. Is it one of those? Yes. Okay. So why don't we we'll table work this? We'll take this offline, yep. and yep. if you can coordinate, and then Bob and Caitlin, if you could send that around to the rest of the board, sure. that we'll would be it. great. Wonderful. So um, we're going to table two items right now that uh, just because we're past time, which is the onboarding manual, uh, and we already talked about the goals. Uh, we'll that. table those to the end. Uh, I just I have two things to say about the onboarding manual no, so we, it can move forward. No, can we please take, we will table that, we can pick it up at the end of the strategy discussion. We're just going to table it right now. Um, we're going to take Oh, we'll do it later. We'll do it later. Let's do it later. We'll do it later. Yep. Um, so we're going to take a five minute break, let us get resituated, and then we'll move on to the strategy session. Resituated is up there. To the strategy. Okay. okay.
All right, we are back in session. Um, so next up we have a, a unique agenda item for the board, which is um, intended to be a brainstorming session of topics, issues, um, subjects that the board is interested in pursuing or discussing in the future. Um, this is meant to be the first of multiple meetings on this um, for town priorities. Um, so some ground rules for the board. Um, the intent today is strictly for brainstorming. Um, we will not be discussing either the merits or the priority of any individual topic. Um, it is meant intent intentionally just to collect everything and list it. And at a follow-up meeting, um, perhaps a little bit more informal than this one, we can start discussing them, um, whether they are you know, short-term, long-term, whether it's something the board wants to pursue, etc. Um, but we're going to table discussion of actual topics today. Um, this is for board participation only. Um, and uh, if well, we've lost our audience, so if there's anyone watching at home that has input that they'd like to provide, um, please reach out to us either individually as a full board. We'd love to hear from you. Um, this is intended, as I said, to be an ongoing conversation. So if, you, if there's something of interest to you that you don't hear tonight, let us know. We're happy to add it to the list for further consideration. Um, with that, I will hand it over to Jim. Hi, thank you so much. Um, all right, so we're going to move along here pretty quickly so we can get to the, the bulk of what you're doing. First of all, I wanted to say congratulations, taking time out as a board to address what your interests, what your goals are, is an important thing to do and it's exceptionally hard to do, as I'm sure you found um, as you're going through the typical business of, um, of being on the board. So it's important that you do this um, for the residents at home. It helps you organize for success and it helps give voice to the issues that inspired you to run in the first place. And you can bring back those interests things that have come up, things that you've seen, um, and for those members who may be stepping off the board, brings you, you can bring your experience and your insight as well. So it's a really a wonderful thing to do as a board and it's something I encourage. I've done this in another community nearby in Wakefield and um, at their request and we had really a tremendous conversation over there. So I wanted to give you, uh, you folks a little bit of information about me and for folks at home so they have an understanding of sort of why I'm doing this. Um, I'm the business administrator here in Town Hall. I work for Matt. Um, he's a fantastic boss. There you go. <laughs> Sucking up. No. Um, <laughs> when is your game time? Now, Matt. <laughs> uh, I uh, was elected to the Tewksbury Board of Selectmen in April. Um, so I am a selectman as well. So I understand. What it's like. it was the, prior to that, I was the first female moderator, town moderator in Tewksbury. We have open town meeting. And um, in that case, we are the second largest legislative body in the world because any voter can vote at town meeting. Andover is the largest. There it is. Um, and prior to that, I was on the Tewksbury School Committee. So I've kind of done the, the gamut. I'm enjoying being on the Board of Selectmen very much currently. Um, so I have a background in economics and business. Uh, business You're a jumbo school. too, huh? Hmm? You're a jumbo. You better believe it. <laughs> so am I. That, all right. Can we, we should sing later. Um, <laughs> economics too, so we know the song. There we go. Yeah, exactly. um, and uh, I sit as a counselor on the Northern, Northern Middlesex Council of Governments, the regional planning agency, and I've done far too many local nonprofits and charitable organizations that I've, I've been leader, a leader of. And previously, which sort of speaks to this portion, I used to work for a thought leadership firm called the Patricia Siebold Group, little small boutique firm in Boston in a former life, and um, where I used to do consulting and, and writing and so forth about e-business and customer experience. So sort of how do you work toward getting to achieve your goals that help your <coughs> constituents or your customers or whatever it is. So that's sort of my background. Um, I also have here two children, an overprivileged golden doodle and a cat with an attitude problem. I thought about visual aid, but we decided to skip that. <laughs> so, um, so for tonight's school, we're going to, like I said, take time out of the routine to brainstorm your topics. I had a very nice conversation with um, your chair to talk about the, the way she kind of wanted this to go for now and how we want to organize for tonight, and it was really, really helpful. Um, afterward, I'll take your, um, your ideas and I'll start organizing them 
and then we'll bring them back for a future session and talk about all kinds of different things we can do. We can do board protocols, we can do self-assessments. Some of that stuff is in your packet. You can see what we've done before. Um, we'll take these ideas and start working toward goals and objectives that are measurable and that you can decide it's the long-term goal, it's the short-term goal, and who's going to do it, how are we going to do it, what does success look like, and then um, and anything else really that that you're looking to do. So um, as we go forward, it's an interactive, iterative process, and um, it's something that is meant to not take forever to do either. So, um, so you'll have something to work with pretty quickly is the intention. So um, what I have here is just a simple document, and I can start capturing your ideas. But I know that you've been you've prepared in advance um, things that you want to capture, and we can go in. I'm thinking we can kind of go around the room and take your ideas individually and then open it up to you may say something that sparks an idea that somebody else has. Mm. It's not about the discussion, it's not about the merits, but it's something, things like this happen, they come up and they grow organically, so let's open up space for that. I don't think it's going to take a whole heck of a lot of time. Um, and if you want, I do have some materials here that we can get up and do sort of a, a tactile or some post-it notes so we can get, we can really get, we can dig down into the consulting fund. Um, but we can save that sort of charrette approach for a future session as well, because of the hour. So whatever you want to do, this is your session, your time, and I'm just here to make sure that, um, that Vanessa can participate as a, as a member of the board, and I will run the meeting. So all questions to me. Um, all comments to me, and I will. Uh, I would love to start. Let's see. How should we start? Alphabetically. I'll, I'll volunteer. Okay, let's go, Mark. <laughs> so I'm going to um, capture your comments under your name. Great. Okay. So um, first, mm -hmm. I'd like to consider the uh, Community Preservation Act as an opportunity for the town to okay. to leverage funds. From the state, work with grants. Yep. Will we get a copy of these? Sure. Uh, yes, all copies of these will be made available. Okay, Mark. Next, I think that we should create point people on the board. Singular point people. <laughs> point persons. Point persons for uh, priorities and projects as we move forward. As a, as someone who can bring the information back to the full board on a regular basis. Yep. So it's like a board pragmatic sort of organizational piece so because none of you yes. all of you together have wonderful ideas but not all of you can work on all of the things all of the time you have to delegate and, and trust so yep right. okay. I like it. Um, I'd like for the community to enter into a discussion about a community center slash senior center and I want to give you just a drop more color because I think mm -hmm. it, it comes from thinking about potential options that we already have looking at town-owned lands, looking at potential sources of funds that could range from hospital trust to veterans affairs to CPA to mm -hmm. other sources, mm -hmm. and free cash. Okay. Um, I probably should have just sent this to you. <laughs> it's okay. I you like, want to just say as a, for, as a recovering newspaper editor, I can pretty much type Yeah, you know, you're flying. I can, can see those fingers. Yeah. That, that uh, high school course paid off. Um, the I'd like to see the town schools, RML, B, and perhaps the library as well um, meet regularly, work more closely together toward town top of the pyramid goals. Town schools, RMLD, and library board of trustees, library all, board elected, all elected boards, and, and I think that. The FinCom should be there as well, definitely. I don't know if there are other appointed boards, but I think FinCom definitely. Some joint session? Uh, not session, sessions, yes. Sessions. Yeah. Annually. To, regularly, I would say. Because I think we have a format now that doesn't, it's a few times a year and it doesn't do what I think we can do. So okay. I'd like to see it bigger than that. We do financial forums. Yep. And they tend to be topic specific, mm -hmm. not really strategic. All right, so we want to take it from a tactical to a strategic approach. Right, so instead um, of the so operating not, budget, not, it's the capital. So more of like vision-driven versus uh, running from the budget. Is right. that okay. yeah. like and, capturing and what you're saying? Yes. Not as a replacement. I think the others serve a purpose, but I think it's another function that would be great. 
Um, the next topic is, I'm going to call it uh, energy, <laughs> because it is looking at electric vehicles in a town fleet, infrastructure for downtown, uh, energy efficiency activities that um, go beyond the realm of performance contracting. So I think we have a discussion of performance contracting about to take place. I think this mm -hmm. is an additional discussion that I'm suggesting here. So electric vehicles in town fleet, infrastructure downtown, energy efficient, what was that piece? Uh, energy efficiency and systems. The, the HVAC is probably the big one. Okay, yep. Um, then I have some kind of, oh, sorry. Um, I'd like to get to the end of the Oakland Road uh, land discussion. <laughs> okay. Um, now these are kind of a little bit smaller, and, and I don't want to put them into time frames necessarily. Don't worry about that. We'll worry okay. about all that stuff in the future. Yep. Okay. I'd like to find a way for our meetings to work more efficiently this board's meetings to work more efficiently um, with all sorts of open ideas but presentations in advance maybe a consensus agenda uh, other kinds of mechanisms that we might use to just make our time as efficient as possible I'd like to talk about improving community service feedback through the board and to the residents and businesses improve community, community service feedback Okay. In other words, there may be wonderful things happening. Yep. How to share that information, how to give feedback to the residents and businesses who have asked questions, how we work as a board through those things. It, it, it's come up, we've started a discussion of it, but we haven't come to a solution. So I'd like to talk about that. Okay. Um, I'd like to see us do anonymous polls um, to get feedback on how we're doing, what people would like to see, and how we can improve. And the reason anonymous is so that um, if people want to say who they are, that's fine, but they shouldn't be concerned about anything by sending stuff in to us. Uh, I'm trying to read my, I, I could read the writing, I'm trying to remember what it was about. Um, I'd like to set long-term economic development goals and housing development, development goals for the town. Oh, I know. What, okay. And is that one. separate from the 40B conversation or the development? It, it's a high level about what what is the what's the plan that meets the needs of the residents, the businesses going forward. And okay. um, one more that I see here. That, oh, sorry, I had it. I'm gonna come back. Oh. Um, how do we help residents and businesses thrive in this community? The reason this one came up is in thinking about all of the retail space that we have and are about to have. What role can we play in helping some of those activities? Okay. And I appreciate it. your private businesses in many cases. Sure. What role can we as the select board, what role can we take? How, how can we be helpful uh, okay. to that system? Um. I'll stop there. Do you have more? No. The, the others are, are actually, uh, Bob, you asked for some feedback specific to budget priorities. Sorry, I just I put them here. Okay. All right, so that's 11 for you. That's how many <laughs> have. <laughs> right. Um, and it's I, not a competition. I'll check the spelling and everything <laughs> later and, you know, and so forth. But, yeah, I think we grabbed it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right, so let's move on to Andy. No. No? Come on, now's your time. <laughs> sure. Um, I guess uh, um, one of the things that, that, that uh, I campaigned on um, yep. to go back to what you originally said was respect for uh, making sure that volunteers were respected um, and, and that there was transparency. Um, and so I I'm going to interrupt you really yes. quickly. Are yeah. those two different things? Two different Respect things. for volunteers and transparency yeah. in government. Transparency. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that um, 
we the, the board has gotten much better at respecting the independence of the various boards and committees mm -hmm. um, but we um, still need to think more about what a, a liaison's role is um, to the different boards and committees. So it's sort of a subheader of, of respect for volunteers. Okay. Um, as far as transpar transparency goes, I think generally I'd like to see um, the board um, work with the town manager um, in increasing the transparency behind the way decisions get made in town. So um, as much as possible, they can see the decision-making process. And, and there's a record of it. And that, and that, to jump off of that would be, you know, we have a capital plan uh, that we just discussed this evening, and yep. it has some big ticket items on it. It has some smaller big ticket items on it, and I think, um, for me, it's all about building trust with with residents, having them have trust in their town government. Transparency helps towards that, and also. Um, getting them involved in the, the capital investment pro plan, our capital investment okay. plan. So you want to have, so what you're asking for um, with vis-a-vis -vis the capital plan is yeah. some uh, ability to have a community engagement in that process. Yes, okay. yeah. So they see what's being, what's being thought of down the road, you know, what we think are, need, need, needs to get done. Sure. Get their input in that. Um, it also decreases surprises, things like that. Um, yeah. Okay. And then uh, two two other things. Uh, one is um, try to become a. I think it's a green city. Um, yeah. And that opens us green up. Green community. Green community. Thank you. Yep. Um, and I think that will open us up. That will allow us to get some funding um, that way. Tewksbury is a green community, and we have a CPA too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Had it for a long time. All right. Um, all right. So obtain some funding. Okay. Okay. And other than that. And then, lastly, I think that um, this this board um, and every board should start with the basics of, of government, governance. And that is, uh, and this is, goes to the onboarding manual for, for members. We, we ha the first thing we have to know is what our um, powers and duties are as written in the, in the charter and mm -hmm. in the bylaws. And because otherwise, um, we risk misusing our powers or, or not using them sufficiently to accomplish the duties that we've been asked to accomplish or that we want to accomplish. So. Um. about you know the sidewalk issue and making sure that people um, who for whom the sidewalks are their 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 means of getting about that they have a way to get about um, you said inclusive and what an inclusive community. and inclusive okay I, I was uh, afraid I missed a word okay so I am sensitive to to 
argue to not, um, to, you know, the con the ge uh, to the general concern that the select board should stay within its own lane. <coughs> In keeping with Mark's thinking about collaborating more and meeting more with the other elected boards, I think we should keep on our radar screen um, some questions around school funding, um, you know, whether it's what the school town split should be, whether funding um, that comes, new funding that comes to us at, uh, above and beyond what we've been receiving as a result of the Chapter 70 reforms mm -hmm. should be affected in some way to the schools. Um, and then the question around funding full day kindergarten. Um, I think that those are things that should, the select board should um, be in conversation with other elected boards and the finance committee about. Um, we should have, uh, be thinking about uh, meeting our big capital needs, schools, senior center, DPW garage. Is this is a separate call, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just um, uh, planning around our big capital needs. And you said, uh, what did you say? You said DPW. What did you say? I said, uh, yeah, I said schools, senior center, DPW garage. Okay. Thank you. Um, I did not have this on my list before I came, but I agree with Mark on the CPA. Um, economic, economic development broadly, that's certainly something I think that the board needs to be thinking about um, always. Um, encouraging efficiencies uh, in town. Uh, one example of which might be between the town and RMLD. Uh, I like the idea of us setting goals and holding ourselves accountable to them uh, with uh, ways to measure mm -hmm. how we're um, moving towards them. Um, and also on the kind of like accountability for ourselves, um, closing the loop. Um, and this is something that you know, Vanessa and I and, and Bob are working on to a certain extent on the communications policy front, but closing the loop for ourselves and responding to residents and then for the things that we ask Bob and town staff to look into for us. I think kind of putting systems in place um, for how we make sure that we close the loop on the things that we we want to um, to get back to people on. Uh, reframe, reframing our liaison responsibilities. Um, and that's worth, uh, worth a, a larger discussion, but for me, I'd be, I'd be interested in seeing the liaison role be one where we where we are a resource to the other boards, commissions, and committees, um, rather than uh, you know the expectation that we attend as many meetings as possible of the boards, commissions, and committees uh, that to which we serve uh, as liaison. Um, sustainability, sustainability, and um, becoming a green community. Uh, and open meeting law training for all boards, commissions, and committees. All right, you grabbed two really yep, quickly I there. I was quick. trying to <laughs> sustainability craft the other one. So and sustainability and, and becoming a green community. Okay. And I know that there's town staff is already working on that to sure, sure, extent, sure. but um, and then open meeting law training for all boards, commissions, and committees. Mm -hmm. Any else? That's all. Okay. Mr. Halsey. Yes. It's your turn, dear. Okay. <laughs> you ready? Uh, not even a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, Halsey, please. So, you know, there's been a lot of things said that I think that I completely endorse off of several lists, actually. Um, I mean, Ann just talked about self accountability. Um, that was that was my term for oh, your um, for you know what you were I think talking about. Um, I, I think we lack self accountability to each other and to the public. We just kind of march along, um, and I think there's a better way to do it. And I think this is actually the way that you frame it. 
Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I'm very happy that we're doing this. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think it's really important. Yeah. It's really important. And it sets the tone as you go forward as a board and as membership changes. You can kind of create a framework to, for that piece. And you're, you're talking about it, but you can do that right now. So, so um, I have um, five or six things that haven't been directly. I think it's good to repeat, if there, if you don't mind, just quickly, if there's something that's already been said. Okay. Emphasizing well, it, the repetition is not a bad so, idea. Right. So just go through, we can go really quickly. So one of we're the not things that discussion. was on my list was property evaluation, which was also mentioned on, uh, I believe, Mark's list. Um, and that property evaluation for me is, what do we own? How do we use it? How are we going to use it? What's it going to look like in 2030? As opposed to what it looks like today. Um, and I, I think that evaluation should be open-ended to say, should we keep it? Should we change it? Should we add to it? So I think a general property evaluation is something that I think we are most responsible for when you think about all the elected boards. Um, and any, you know, attendant committees to any of those boards. Okay. So I think we're kind of the drivers there. Um, I think we need to step away and have a holistic um, evaluation of parking in this town. Okay. And, you know, specifically um, and, and obviously um, downtown. Yeah. We've changed. We've changed successfully and I think productively um, to match what the state was looking for and what we felt the community needed we changed zoning in a broad area yep and there's a unintended consequence of the success of that and that is I mean right now we're in progress there's places being built sure there are you know there's limitations to parking as a result of that. I mean, you look at one project, you lost 12 parking places. Yeah. Now, 12 parking places in a town, you wouldn't think was big. Well, but it's that, big. yeah, I know what you're saying. So you um, want to have the, you want to just do the evaluation of the whole parking. Yeah, area. and I think we need to do it with everything on the table. Okay. So, so maybe projections. Words, too. Yeah. In other words, I mean, we did a study not long ago that said, um, you know, people just need to change their cultural outlook. Theoretically, that's a good idea, but practically speaking, it's not working, you know, because we ask people to do that and they're not sure. executing against it. And sure. now what's happening <laughs> is we're infusing many more people, many more cars, and much more commercial opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I think all of that can work if we look at parking, step away like we never looked at it before, mm -hmm. and holistically um, try to take a look at it. Um, okay. There are two things that I think that need to be addressed that Mark mentioned in one broad category. So I think in our senior population, mm -hmm. what I have discovered, especially over the last, I think, four months I've been visiting on a regular basis to the senior center, mm -hmm. um, I would strongly recommend that that continue. Mm -hmm. um, when, you know, so that they, because I'll go down there anyway, because I like hanging around with them and talking to them and everything, because um, I just like to do that anyway. But <clears throat> they need somebody from this board because it it gives them a sense of belonging, and that they not sure. only deserve it, they do belong. Mm -hmm. Now, relative to the seniors, I think we need to survey the seniors for what they really want. I mean, we kind of said. Oh, we need a senior center. Well, maybe we do, maybe we don't. Maybe the one we have is good, maybe it's not. The only way to know that is to get to all of our seniors, and we can do that with the data available to us, mm -hmm. um, and ask them specifically to answer a series of questions. We've put questions together, for example, in a couple of great surveys. Uh, yeah. Recreation has done some out, you know, outstanding, Matter of fact, we've got more fabulous information from three surveys on Birch Meadow than you could possibly shake a stick at. Yeah. If we'd ever act on any of them, it would be good. Um, we we kind of got to get out of so, our own way. So, but what I'm yeah. saying is, we need to actually ask seniors. Yeah. Okay. 
they need to tell us we need a place to do yoga. We need a place to. But do your survey is is limited to what they're looking for in a senior center. Yeah. Okay. What they're looking. What do they need for programs from this town? Okay. Is it a senior center? Mm -hmm. Maybe it is. Is it a better lunch program? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Sure. I mean, there are uh, in the surrounding. We have many seniors that leave this town and go to the other senior centers because of what's offered and that's what they tell me so we need to hear from them okay. directly not guess okay we also need to have to in that category we need to have realis realistic expectations of what we can deliver as a result of that stuff sure. okay yeah. now on the community center side it's similar I've here often we need a community center, we need a teen center, can't we do these together? Maybe we can, I don't know. But what does that mean? Nobody really knows what that means. I mean, what's a community center? Um, it means different things to different people, and maybe we need to find out. I think it's worth the time and money to survey people to hear what the best ideas are going to come, not from just five of us sitting here, but, you know, um, we've got all these people that live here um, let's find out what they want because if you follow social media you'll hear this community center thing surface mm -hmm. you'll hear the teen center thing surface oh we used to have a teen center at the old high school sure and then it became condos and then it burned down and now it's condos again um, but you know people will talk about that sure. you know kind of idly in in social media chatter I don't know what that means. Um, I think we've got to find out so we're not slaying windmills. I, I hear you. All I right. know what they want. What's next? Um, I think we need to evaluate um, across the board how we handle recreation in this town. Currently, we handle it in three flavors. Um, they don't sometimes they coordinate sometimes they don't that evaluation should be a the facilities B the opportunities and C is the management which is <clears throat> what I'm saying right now we have three major forms of recreation that are going on and facilities are administered by an independent um, agency Burbank Ice Arena by the recreation department you know fields um, but then of course they cross over with schools and facilitate the schools facilities sure. sort of but not always in some circumstances they do okay. and so it's no wonder that what we end up with is confusion and acrimony and well, we do often do that because of the management systems we're using so I suggest and evaluation is good. Yeah, evaluation. I don't want to get too far down into the weeds on no, where you I, want I, to go with it, but no, it's I good mean, to keep know, it at that get, level. There's so, so I could sit in every one of these major headings I'm giving you. Mm -hmm. I have four or five topics on each one of those bullet points, which are too far in the weeds for this discussion. Yeah. Um, but. But that will come up at the next session. So I mean, which I will right be on. at. So I will. I'll give that to you. Yes. Be email made. it to me. Yes. Um, so. Um, and the last one has been mentioned by two of, of my associates here. Mm -hmm. We need a realistic expectation of the liaison responsibilities between boards, commissions, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> typically, we have Monday through Thursday. And if you take an average month, that would create about 19 evenings if I and I have done this if I overlay my responsibilities as a liaison I would be gone 17 nights I know exactly but I mean it's at a certain point you just go uh, huh and that's just nights and that's just nights that has nothing to do with you know we have a little something that happens in a day you know we have a morning thing I, I, you know it's it's stunning if you if you actually step we, we we assign to ourselves oh yeah I'll do that I'll do this I'll do that and then you look at it 
And it's like, and frankly, what happens is paralysis takes over. And you and you know you you find one you really like, and you dig into that one, and then right. you know do you overstep your bounds because you're so excited about it? I know exactly what you say. I, I totally get it. So I and I, and just come up with your colleagues as well. So I think that this one is definitely uh, a, a big. I don't know why it doesn't want to work with me now. Um, I'm I'm with you. The so, liaison one is huge. Yeah. The other thing I think that we need to understand thoroughly. And this may require some legal help. Yeah. We need to understand all of the um, endowment. The, ho the hospital endowment was mentioned, for example. There's a hundred of them. You know. Yeah. There's a like. I, I, that's not an exaggeration. If you go to you know, and I and I've been to those meetings because I've sporadically been assigned to that committee. There's about a hundred of these little subsets. And some of them have a little bit of money, and some of them have a lot of money. And you know, the hospital fund, for example, has a lot of money, and I think that committee's done a really good job of trying to redefine, because there's not going to be a hospital built and ready, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but there's a lot of money there, so that they've redefined how they've distributed the money, which has been great. I mean, you know, things like helping you know seniors and getting them rides and things sure. like that. We need to look at all of those um, endowment funds that are currently managed by a committee. And we need to homogenize those into what they really do. That needs to be studied and then we need to understand if it should be in a different category from what it is and, and how do we spend it or how do we not spend it, you know? I mean, so I think that that committee's been do doing a good job doing what it's doing. Sure. But I think it needs a more complete look. I mean, now's the time to take a. I think it is because if we're going to kind of. We start looking at things like um, a green community, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, when some of that money came in, green community, you know, may had a lot of grass. Um, but, then, you know, that's been around for so long. And, you know, maybe you look at that and it redefines ways to get to uh, whether it's a green community or a zero carbon footprint. I mean, look, I think all of that stuff's important, but we got to think through how we do it and in what order we do it and what are our resources. So I think we need to examine if there's some resources there. Okay. So that's enough for now. I, I have a lot more, but... You have more? <laughs> Do you have more in the big categories, or sorry? No, I think that's enough big. I think every you, the rest of you have hit the big categories. Um. So part of um, before we, we get to Vanessa, um, part of the exercise that we'll do in the future um, at a future meeting is we'll um, show you that there is consensus for ideas, and and it'll be sort of done in a way that you can kind of interact with the ideas individually. And kind of, yeah, I really agree with this one. Yeah, I really like this one. Or maybe I wouldn't put this in this bucket. I might put it over here. And so you'll see where there's consensus, and you'll see where there's, and what you'll find is a lot fewer areas where, oh, maybe this is something we really need to have conversation about at a meeting. But pretty much we can start moving on other things. So I think it'll be really good. So, you know, that first one I talked about, the property evaluation, mm -hmm. I mean, it kind of came up this morning, or the, this morning, and earlier at the meeting today. Um, and I don't want to get too deep in the weeds. Sure. But you know, that Camp Rice Moody showed up in front of us, okay? And it was like, who's on first? Because I remember, Bob, the same way you do, that they were supposed to come back to us. It's been so many years ago, I don't remember what the issue is, but I know it's still an issue. <coughs> and it's hanging out in the breeze. Um, so we, you know, so that's why I think we gotta. So yeah, so John, if you can forward those additional ideas you have to myself and to uh, Vanessa, that would be I great. Will. That would be great, yep. and then we will make sure that those are. Um, and I'll probably talk to you. Is I'll probably talk to everybody at some point in the process, but I'll talk to you separately as well, so we can okay. capture those ideas. Okay. All right. Now you can, it's all you. So exciting. It's all you. Um, so minor thing, it's A L B A. Say R A. A L V A R A. Yep. Thank days. you. No E. She's My glasses are coming tomorrow. Um, I remember that from something earlier. I can't remember what. Okay. So thank you. So I um, also echo a lot of um, 
what people said as far as the, the bigger issues, the economic development, the capital planning, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, so I'll add those just so that they're on the consensus list, but I also have a lot of sort of smaller issues that I think are worth looking sure. at. Um, and these are in no particular order, they were just sort of as they dawned on me. Okay. Um, so one of the things that has come up recently, and I actually talked to Bob about it, is moving potentially the discussion of moving the evaluate with the two town manager evaluation to follow the election cycle. Because one of the things we found is that when you do the evaluation and you're asked to complete the form following an election, you've only been in office about three or four months. Not saying this is good or bad, just throwing it out there as an idea. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I've been following is the gender balance on boards, committees, and commissions. So a couple of years when I did, when I looked at it, um, we were at about 65-35 men. So from a recruitment perspective, you know, as we talk about representation on these volunteer boards to identify if there is a room for improvement. Um, we currently have a historical delay um, for demos of six months. It previously was 12. Um, I've been asked on a few occasions um, if that's worth further discussion. I think we as a board could benefit from understanding our arrangement with the MWRA better. Um, I have free cash. I'll just jump on what everybody else said, so let's just, I'll leave that one alone. Um, Use of the reverse 911. I'm sorry, free oh, sorry. cash, what was your? Uh, our use, you know, working with FinCom on identifying, um, you know, they have particular policies. Okay. There's three of us here who served on FinCom, so we sort of know the implications there. Um, okay. Uh, and there's a lot of it right now, so, and that's a good thing, but how do we work with FinCom to determine use? <laughs> uh, use of reverse 911 feature for, for texts and phone calls. <coughs> um, I'm your girl. <laughs> I run that system. Uh, I'd like to look into how the town can be more LGBTQ plus friendly. Do we have gender neutral bathrooms um, or family bathrooms? Um, <coughs> do we, you know, we don't fly a pride flag for pride month. Um, some things like that. Um, sustainability has already been mentioned extensively. Um, partnering with RMLD on sustainability issues and other infrastructure as needed. Partnering all right, with RMLD. Infrastructure and what other issues as needed? Um, infrastructure and sustainability. Thank you. Uh, John nailed this one, the property that the town owns and what we're going to do with it. Echoing Mark's point on meeting structure, um, the format, the frequency, how long people talk, just throwing it out there. Uh, liaison responsibilities. That's a different one. That's a different one. Outstanding. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of consensus. So <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Communications, so how we communicate information out to the public. This was one of my big campaign issues, which is that it's hard to find information and things have gotten better, but we're not there yet. Okay. Um, John nailed this one, senior citizen needs. You know, we talked about the senior center, but are there other things? Um, and we know there are, but we don't do a very good job of soliciting that. Um, one of the things I've seen is, as liaisons to the various BCCs, how do we facilitate communication amongst BCCs? So the boards, committees, and commissions. So yep. there are things that, especially between ZBA and CPDC, but also cons, con, historical, you know, a decision that one makes or something that's under the purview of one board may have overlap with another. I think it would um, sometimes very knowledgeable people on those boards do that, um, but that doesn't always happen, and I think it can be hard for people to go, residents or, or developers to go before those boards. 
Um, I want to talk about climate change. One of the things we're seeing with the field space right now is that the winters go longer, which means the fields aren't available and it rains a lot more now in the spring than it used to. So there's less field space for these recreation needs. Um, building on John's point about the senior center, I think getting into the community more and being available as far as our you know, office hours, if we want to call them. We did the town fair. I think everyone who was in town attended that one. It was great. I loved it. You know, what else can we do to get out there more? Um, um, how accessible are we as a town from an ADA perspective? So are our forms readable? Um, are, you know, I, I have limited knowledge in this area, but I also want to make sure that we're sensitive to the needs of people um, who have additional needs. Um, signage bylaws. Someone recommended that they be reconsidered. Uh, and I echo John's point on recreation space and management. Um, and my last one to make it an even 20. <laughs> I like it. 2020. 2020. <laughs> 2020. These are, these are a lot of small ones. Um, everybody else already hit the big ones. Um, veteran housing, which falls into the capital discussion, capital um, capital projects and land discussion. Yep. Okay. okay. So that's not over yet. my sub points. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that, so that'll be interesting. Um, all right, so thank you. You guys all been great listening to each other talk. Um, and give, and Mark, I'm seeing it. You've got another point. What is it? Um, one thing that we haven't talked about it relates to communications, but I think the position of the town has typically been um, to kind of take care of issues internally. Um, and they're one could say that that's not an open structure. So what I'm suggesting is we want to talk about being open to issues that we face, reporting them, and addressing them. Can you be more specific? Um, I can, sure. So um, hate activities would be a specific example. Um, I think we should be open in terms of addressing Okay. as opposed to being concerned that it's in our community it's more I think talking about it it is in the community not just ours others and how do we best address that and being more open to it I think progress is being made but I think it's not I think it's a good discussion to have I agree. okay um, so it's interesting, and we can talk more about this later when we have more time. Um, but as you've gone through this list, there's a number of things on here that might be like really great for little workshops from from staff about how we how things are done with and how how they're managed as part of your um, your kind of uh, retreat or shred or whatever program. That however we move along, it might be useful to have like break it up with little presentations or something, which I'm. Not promising staff time. <laughs> I, I, I can do a couple of them myself, um, but I think that might be. You might see some some of like how it's done, and, and that might be interesting. Um, and then and then we'll have then like how do we want to go forward from there? So like a little little kind of insider town hall piece as well would be good. So, but I, I think your point is well taken. So and, and included. Other ideas that have come up that you haven't that kind of inspired you is the conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think this probably fall, it falls under the you know encouraging and inclusive community, but because Vanessa brought up the concept of like celebrating pride and, and raising rainbow flag, which other communities surrounding us do, mm -hmm. um, and I also know of other communities that do like a public lighting of a menorah and thinking about like, sure. we have our tree lighting, but could we do something like that as well? Um, just being more inclusive in the um, the different kinds of winter and December uh, holidays that people celebrate. Add it to the list. Okay. That's that actually got brought up last year. Yeah, it's happened before too. Okay. 
they have seen I've seen in other communities like immediately surrounding us doing these things. And yeah. So. Sure. Um, one thing that that I've <laughs> forgot to add and and Mark and others have brought brought up the um, coming up with sort of a short, mid, and long-term economic development uh, concept for the town. What do we want the town to look like um, in 5, 10, 20 years? Uh, I, I'd like to see us do better at um, handling advocating for residents rights on um, when it comes to development in their in their backyard in their neighborhood um, okay. and that ties together with economic development I think for it to be successful we need to make sure that we're doing all we can to um, you know advocate for the residents Yep. Um, I think there's there's two, but one in particular. Um, one, working with our state delegates more. I know I have conversations with them periodically, um, and I imagine I know so as well. But is it something we want to do from a more, as opposed to individual board members, that we more publicly as board say we are lobbying our state delegates for next? Yeah. Um, and then along with that, one of the things that. I've encountered to date with open meeting law is the struggle to um, meet with town council as a board. So, because we're not allowed to <laughs> in executive session, um, unless it's for very, very specific issues. Um, so that sort of falls under the previous one um, because that is open meeting law is in fact handled by the state. So. Same idea. That is something we could lobby them for to make an exception to seek legal counsel beyond the for executive session. For executive session, yeah, beyond what is already allowed, which is limited. Okay. So okay. I think that we've. Um, I don't beating around the bush is not really what I mean to say, but I'm, but I'll say that because I can't think of anything more appropriate. Several times it was brought up that we should think about working more closely with FinCom, thinking about working more closely with the other boards um, that are elected. And I, and I do think those are very appropriate. I think one of the things that has always been a challenge for me over six years, um, I, I love to see the numbers. I love to understand the budgets. I'm frustrated that I can't I have really, there's nothing I can do as a member of this board. This board doesn't have a budget, okay? This board offers input and it's always solicited and that's great. Um, FinCom and, 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 you know, three of my associates have served there, you know, really, um, really drive the bus. I mean, that's kind of what goes on there. And that's important that we have a kind of an independent you know, body like that, the most powerful body around the finances of this town for the school committee, okay? I mean, that's just a fact. So, I guess what I'm saying from the standpoint of this board, it would be nice to find a way to have more input into the financial stability of this community. What I have found over six years is that, you know, people elect us to these jobs mm -hmm. and then they kind of think that we're the one drive because we set a tax rate mm -hmm. that we're the ones driving the budget. We're not. No, no, I mean, I understand you know, you mean. Bob has always been, you know, has gone out of his way to seek again tonight, you know. He tells us everything that's going on as he's going to build his budget. He, you know, a couple of years ago we started bringing, you know, the um, all the, you know, department heads in, which was great. It kind of gave us a sense of how he built his budget. Sure. Um, so I, I, I'm glad we're doing that. But really, as a as the select board, we don't. People think that we have some control over the financial future 
of the town, the economic stability of the town. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's economic development, but that's different. That's not the economic sure. stability of the town. So I think that if there's a way, and I, and I think all, all, all of you kind of hint around it, that if we work more closely with the other elected boards, and FinCom is not an elected board, but an important, really an important one, for sure. I mean, kind of the way it comes together, you know, is with the chair here, you know, um, and the, the, um, the chair of FinCom. Uh, that's how appointments get made. And then, of course, the town moderator, which it's, it's kind of a curious, how do you get there? But I guess what I'm saying is I want to accentuate that we need to integrate the minds that are elected to this body to look towards the economic stability of this town. Mm -hmm. And you can't do it a year at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, Bob introduced us to a one-year budget with a two-year lookout. I mean, we kind of, you know, have done some of that. I say it should be even bigger than that. Mm -hmm. um, because if you stop to think about it, <laughs> what we do today has such an impact on what's going to happen, you know, in 2030. I mean, it's... So I think we got to find a way from all of those things that were there to get a close integration of this elected board into valuable input and direction. Um, it doesn't have its own budget, but it has a voice. And the people, it is the people's voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and, they, and the people think we do that. Well, that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing two pieces to that. I'm hearing it sort of an... Um, how can we organize around, so my personal opinion of budgets, yeah. uh, my personal opinion of budgets and, and, and all the different ways is it's a, it's a reflection of the values of the town or whatever organization you are. Your budget is a reflection of the values and what you're trying to do. And so you're, you're, what I'm hearing from you is how to get the select board more in there with how crafting those pieces Right, and well, working yeah. with the we're working with the town manager to do that, and then the other side, an education piece, and in, in, in communicating that to the public that this is these are the components that come together. So there's well, that's, like two that's, parts of it. Yeah, but it's not all of what I just said, no. even though I wasn't clear enough. Um, I, I know I wasn't. And that's my own fault. I'm sorry, but you know, the idea. Somebody said we should be working more closely with the school committee. For yep. example. You know, the school committee drives the bus. They have a budget, and they control 75% of the revenue, if you if you think about the accommodated costs. So, you know, we need to work with them, you know, to, you know, because it's their job to stay in a, in a, in a tunnel around the schools. And then it's our job to be outside that tunnel, bringing the information in because the money yeah. that fuels everything inside that tunnel comes from outside. So I think you started, Mark, when I, and s several of you mentioned it, that we got it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in some ways, that's been conscious, but we are accountable to the people in the way we are. FinCom is not. So. We are. So I think we just need to be make that clearer and mm -hmm. work more closely with those people who are, who are driving that bus. And I say, we as a collective board, um, I know it'll be you plus someone else, but um, I just think it's 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 a noble thing to go working towards. Uh, so, any other final thoughts for now? Hearing none. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hearing none. Uh, I will uh, make a motion that what I'd like to find out from you folks is when you'd like to meet again. Um, and you don't have to decide that right now. Yes, uh, you Okay. <laughs> right now. Um, when we can meet again, um, and uh, and then we will begin crafting sort of how that, what that will look like. But we have um, 1,200 words um, that is will be distilled into language that's useful and, and actionable and so forth. And, and we'll have the long form as well provided to you. Um, and uh, and we'll move on from there. But when do you want to meet again? Um, I'd, I'd like to keep up the momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would be amenable to meeting um, next month. And then we, from there, 
determine you know the frequency mm-hmm. of these meetings um, and I would recommend that it be a non-standard select board meeting so that we're not in this room yep we're somewhere comfortable we can get up and move around what we did in Wakefield we went to um, the America Silverick Center and um, they brought in food and, and it was a working after work kind of meeting and there was we had sort of some icebreakers and we did some mm-hmm. stuff and there, but there was an ability to get up and move around it's a little yeah. hard to sit this mm-hmm. long I mean this is pretty much as long as you really want to go um, but there was food brought in so so we can do that um, and I would not like to miss another my select meetings um, so that's that's okay I didn't have my schedule together when I said yes so so but if we could do it a different night that would be great but I have my schedule yes. in advance and yes. there is also school vacation yeah. weeks coming up in February so it gets a little dicey Patriots aren't playing in the Super Bowl so you've got some some time back there not that we're doing it on Sunday um, and I could but I can do a weekend session if that's interesting to you as well uh, everybody's busy but we, you know we can find that time so February works I think that's great the last time we attempted this was a Saturday morning yeah and Saturday that was about three or four years ago Saturday yeah yeah, we went to Jordan's community room and there was food. And same idea, yeah. Same idea. It's a relaxing, sort of informal environment. So, um, yeah. because you're going to be doing a lot of, a lot of mental work. There's a lot of work that goes into it, but right. it can be fun. Great. So, what do you recommend? At having done this before, what do you recommend as the amount of time necessary for the next session? So, when I did it in Wakefield, we did it four hours, six to ten p.m. And at ten and at nine thirty, people were, and we were still working. <coughs> But people, we went right to 10 o'clock, and um, yeah. and people were kind of starting to fade. So four hours after work is a little long. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have to do. Uh, we did that one big session. They came in with their goals, and then we sort of did some mapping and so forth. And we did quite kind of a few things. What we could do here is maybe two sessions that are like three hours on different. So we could do one on a Saturday morning, like a and bring in sort of like a breakfast. Uh, finished by lunch and then we could do another one that's sort of an after work thing on like a, a Wednesday or Thursday and you could you know I don't know how your board is but you could go out for um, an adult beverage afterward if you wish so um so there's here's a few boards that have gone in trouble there too. not not the trouble kind um, but you could do so it's three hours previously so I'm looking at the calendar for February we have meetings on the 4th and the 11th okay um, me too I would, noted, I would, uh, and then we have February vacation uh, that affects a couple of us the week of the 17th. Sure. Um, I am leaning towards a weekend morning session, if the board is open to that. The thing to note here is, uh, I think we're going to do to John what we did to Dan last session, which is going to work yet until the very last day, because uh, the election is March 3rd. By the way, if you're at home and still with us, please do mark your calendar, March 3rd at the high school. Um, So we could do the 29th of February, which is a Saturday. I'm not available. We could do Sunday, the fir- March 1st. That's a good idea, but why not sooner? Yeah, do you uh, want to do... Okay. That's pretty good. That's kind of a month and a half away. Uh, we could do the 8th. I'm, fa- I'm free on the 8th. I'm free on the 1st. Not the 15th. Not the 22nd. Because that's that February vacation thing. All right, we've got... I mean, yeah, we could do the 1st. We could do the 1st or the 8th. Uh, the first, I'm supposed to be hosting select board office hours at the library in the morning. How's the 8th? In the morning, it's fine. The 8th? All right, the In the eight. morning, I'm fine. All right, so we will find, we'll begin looking John. on a venue. Hold on. Hold yeah, on. i got to move something, but I've got commitments for the first quarter of the year on Saturday mornings, but I'll work around that. Thank you, John. Uh, Bob, do you like to be present? Um, I, I don't really understand. I understand how Wakefield did their work. Um, you're not taking the same path, so I'm having a hard time following it. They spent three or four months leading up to and designing a retreat, and you're going on a retreat all of a sudden pretty fast, so it's different. They had many of these sessions as part of meetings that led up to one kind of big three or four I'm not saying it's right or wrong, I'm just kind of wrapping my head around the I think, I, I, I only speak for myself here, but I see this less as, I think 
while the concept originated as a retreat, I see it more as an ongoing discussion. So we have these 1,200 words and 16 pages right now. Um, but I think we need to start bucketing some of those. And so to me, it's not, you know, I think icebreakers are great and, and whatnot. And there's other topics we could cover more in depth that come from this. But I see it as we have the list. How does this fit into realistically what we are capable of doing? Because we cannot do all of that. Um, right. What can we do as individuals to advance it? And I think that's the conversation that needs to take place. And so I see it less as this is how you work together yeah. and more okay. this is what we can do, could do. Now how do we actually tackle some of it? I, 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 I agree with, with Vanessa. I think the, that we, we work to, together pretty well, mm -hmm. um, but, but we need to know how to be more efficient and how to prioritize and, and all these things. So, um, knowing and just like knowing how many hours Bob works, um, I would say that your presence is, from my perspective, your presence is welcome but not required for Saturday morning. Yeah. It's required in the charter. Oh, oh. I'll do what I can. I understand. Um, is it really? It's your, so you're required to attend all those like, four meetings mm -hmm. with the charter. Oh. Obviously, that's we can not 100% possible. So right, right, yeah. right. I'll, I'll work on um, it. Okay. Well, we can do, do you want to pick a secondary date right now, or do you want to just stay with February 8th Yeah. the moment? Maybe is there like a Thursday night or a Wednesday night that people typically are? What 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 time Saturday uh, the eighth were we thinking of starting? I think nine to noon tops. Okay. That's I would, reasonable. I would agree. Nine to noon. Yep. Um, my February is oddly open. I could also do Sundays if we want to give a back update beyond the eighth. Rather not do Sundays because. Um, Fine. I run a church, so um, a little bit. Jeez. I, I, I what compartmentalize well. I'm a senior warden of, of a church in Andover, and I'm almost done. <laughs> my term is ending very okay. soon, so. Um, so we have the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. Oops. Um, is there anyone who has blackout dates for the 15th, the 22nd, or the 23rd? Sorry, are you in March? February. February. Yeah, I can't do the 15th or the 22nd. But I can do Thursday nights, I can do Wednesday nights pretty easily. I can do Wednesdays. I can do Wednesdays and starting at 7, not yeah. before. Can anyone do the 5th, the 12th, the 19th? Um, hold the phone. Mm -hmm. I'm unavailable not on the 5th. I can do the 5th. This is February or March? February. February. Um, you are unavailable. What day, John? I'm unavailable on Wednesday, the fifth. All right. So can anyone do the twelfth or the nineteenth of uh, February? The twelfth will be we will have that just the night before, so I, we may be depending sick on of each other. <laughs> are we planning? How blurry eyed we may be. Yeah. Are we doing the eighth? And this is another date. It's a backup date. Oh, backup. Oh, backup date. Okay. <coughs> if we can't get a venue, right? We need to have a. So just let me ask a question. You could have potentially, you know, with all due respect, Andy, you have two other opponents. You, there could be two, two different people here. That's right. I mean, I, you know, just thinking out loud. I'm cognizant uh, of that. Yeah. And, you know, you're talking about trying to set um, some operating goals. Um, and so, you know, we try to get it. I'm fine participating. I mean, I, I'm, I have, I enjoy this kind of stuff, to be honest with you, in a weird way. Yeah. Um, but you're going to be missing at least one, and it's possible to be two, but you know, you're going to be missing a member yeah. who you're going to want to bring along for the ride yeah. instead of have an opportunity to participate yeah. by squeezing it in for March 3rd. I'm just saying. Well, yeah. you, we have to have, I think... With with what you have in front of you, you're going to need at least two sessions. 
So one of those is inherently going to have to happen after yeah. the election anyway. So if this board has made some progress in moving the, the, the ball down the field, so to speak, that those new people, we could do a protocol thing at that at that session, which would be more appropriate for board coherency, and then um, and then get their insights as well captured. Because you know, I, I mean, there's a lot of going down into the bushes mm -hmm. on this stuff, um, and you know, as soon as you send that out to us, I want to get it in a copy that I can go down in the bushes. Yep. And just yep. add to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's going to be available. So I'm happy to participate as often as you want me to until March 3rd, and then you know um, the charter tosses me out of here because I because I don't stand for election. But the the information will you know will be in Jane's hands, um, and and you do want to get the new person on board with this. Sure. Yeah. So I, I had thought of that, John, to your point, and I think you know. One of the things that I think is important from the board perspective is that we are all, we are always going to be changing. There is the potential for, and um, um, we've seen that in the last few years, and I think we shouldn't necessarily delay things because there is an election, because there's one every year. So the other thing is that as far as the next steps that we take, you know, as I look at the giant list, one of the things that I see as a priority for the next meeting is bucketing them into basic categories of short, medium, and long term, or one, three, five, ten, or you know, whatever we want to do. Which I think, whoever the new person or people are, um, can weigh in at you know whatever the, the meeting is in March or April or whenever we after. Um, I think if I could add to that, I think that in addition to the timing, the buckets of time, there may be some areas where there's quite a bit of consensus and others where maybe there's less so. Where there's a lot of consensus, I think there, there are a number of them there. Um, we do need to have kind of an operating path, even if it's, if it's for a day, a week, a month, six months, a year, whatever, <coughs> to start. And it'd be great to solicit the new input and to help whoever the new person or people are to understand bless you. Bless you, kind of what, you. where our focus is and what we're, we're working on. But the reality of someone on day one or, or week one, um, they can certainly add you know, things that they're very interested in, but in terms of, in terms of one, will, it, will they have enough background to kind of understand what's possible? I, I'd certainly give them a little bit of time to, to kind of get up to that. But I think the other thing is where there's a lot of consensus already, um, those those are things I think we need to be moving on. And to wait a month or two, I don't think, I think actually takes value away from that. You're going to be sorting it. You're going to be yeah. taking all these lists and you're going to yep. consolidate it, right? I'm going to take the list. I'm, I'm going to not add. consolidate, but you know what I'm saying. You're no, gonna I'm going to, there's, you know, there's repeat things and there's there's subcategories. There's some meta categories that we can talk about, uh, liaison, with board responsibilities, certainly a meta category come up to tonight. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have this sort of all organized and we'll present this to you and then we'll work it from there. To okay. an so I'm not, well, I, I'm going to suggest that we do meet in February, assuming we can find a date when we all can and there's a venue available. Mm -hmm. And then we, after the election, at whatever our first meeting is, we'll find a person. 17th. Thank you. St. Patrick's Day. Boo. So um, that we then... I'm officially released by that time. You'll so be have, you'll be yeah, sorry. I'll be having green here someplace. <laughs> uh, get the get the, the green on tonight. Yeah. That that get after ready. that, you know, maybe we can coordinate, even if it's offline, um, with the new person or people to have a meeting in March, and then continue that cadence until we're a little bit more stabilized. Um, I'm not sure. This wasn't entirely clear to me, but I know that Gene had asked but John could send you know, some of his additional thoughts. And I was just wanted to clarify if you'd be sending the areas that you agreed with others on but hadn't voiced. Because I think that would be helpful to know, um, you know where you agreed with. I'm happy to add you know, my own color to every, everything you put together. Okay, you, uh, wonderful. 
Great. I just I think that would be I would I would value that. Um, and I think I I would actually think that newly elected board members would have a lot to offer um, in terms of visioning and goals because they are fresh off they will be fresh off a campaign where in you know ideally they will have spent a lot of time listening to residents concerns and so I think that they actually could have they may in terms of what is possible on what timeline they might not and, and through what um, mechanism but in terms of um, what what goals we should have as a board and um, what issues are, are of concern to residents. I think they might have um, very much near to the ground. So uh, just to clarify, are you suggesting that we skip the February meeting or that we have both February and March meeting? Uh, that's February and March is fine. I do want, I want for historical record and for us to, to know going forward um, the areas that John. You really want me to write down what runs around in my head? <laughs> Yes. That could be very I think that would be We made Dan do it. It's only I, fair. I, I, would I would enjoy and appreciate that. Um, um, okay. So can we go back to the calendar then? Vanessa? Yes. Can we figure out the date via email, which we're allowed to do, um, and save the time here and just make, make people answer quickly? Um, I can. We are not good at answering quickly. I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. This is one of our structural issues. Okay. Um, so okay. I'm going to suggest we have the 12th, the night. There's a FinCon meeting, I think, on the 26th. Well, I'm in February right now. Let's just. So we, we have the 8th, and then you're suggesting the, the 12th? The 8th is our initial. Yep. Um, what is everyone's situation on the 12th? I see Anne's point about having meetings back to back, but we're sort of limited. Yeah. So Just to clarify, this is a backup date this is if the 8th doesn't work. It's not Correct. a second meeting. Correct. Okay. Wait, we have a meeting on, the, am I in the wrong month here? No, no, February. February 11th is your meeting. We have a meeting on the 11th? Yes, yeah. we do. <coughs> Board meeting. And the, so, the fourth and the eleventh. Correct. Okay. So can everyone do the twelfth as a backup in case the eighth doesn't work? Anne? Yes. John. Yes. Mark? Seven o'clock, yes. Noted. Andy, can you do the twelfth? Yes. Okay. Jane? I can. I put it down. Okay, great. Okay. And I can as well. So the eighth will be our Will we do that here? But that no, we would likely do it to elsewhere, be determined. But that's to be determined Try depending to on the place where we can on do what yep. Jane can find. Uh, okay, great. Vanessa, yes. If I could, everybody else weighed in on the on the. Or should we do this before the election, after the election? No and, and 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 I and I think that um, I see this as I think we need to get out of the mindset of um, reinventing the wheel every every election cycle. And, and I think that we all, you know, select board members are elect because they're, they, are, they are looking out for the, best, the good of the town. Sure. And so this is a different way. We're, this, I think what Vanessa's doing here is great, and it's a different way to work uh, as a board. It, it, it'll make us work together more efficiently, and um, goal setting, all, all of these things. I, I think it, it shouldn't stop uh, in March. I mean, I think occasionally the board, the board should reassess. And so as new members come in and the board may change, the, 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 this pro, the, the pro, I'd like to see the process still happen, but some of the buckets may change. Yeah, yeah, you may want to, but there has to be revisit it. You know, by you know, twice a year or something. Yeah, I mean, there has to be continuity. Once you're stalling, yeah. From, from from election, you know, through the election, there has Bob? to be. Um, we we do similar things as you're doing staff, not quite mechanical, but I just want to bring one up. One thing I'm some of you talked about. There's kind of three parts. One is consensus. One is short term, medium term, long term. But one of the most important things you haven't really identified as strongly is what's the priority? How important is this thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I caution the board or I'll rush down the path on something that's good consensus and it's a short run because you haven't really put it in the context of how important is this? Mm -hmm. Right. You kind of all admitted we can't do it all. So that, that's something we have found that we have to stop. So I'm getting excited just because we can do this. How important is it? I 
Uh, and, and at some point, I'm going to want to know what do you want staff to do. So um, for now, it's fine. I'll absorb a lot of this. Um, Jane said it earlier. Some of these points, to me, require you to get more information from me and from staff. Yes. And you tell us how you want to base. And I think that stage happens once we have everything bucketed and we start talking about priorities I feel like that's the appropriate time because we, we can't really move forward until the board has a deeper understanding of the issues and how they affect staff um, so are there I think we're good all right I think we're good. so save this and thank you very much everyone Jane thank you very much for Thanks, Jane. playing chair um, <laughs> Appreciate it. Just making sure. Good. Okay. Before I, I start really changing. Our meeting. I All just right. don't want you. Yeah, there you go. I'm just okay. going to do this and move out of the way. Okay. So the only last thing we wanted to do, um, and we're going to keep this quite brief, uh, which is the onboarding manual, select board onboarding manual. So I'll, ju I'll just say uh, two things. Um, I, I set this up in three parts, as you can see, powers and duties of the boards, because we need, we need that we need to know really well, as I've explained. Select board policy is also very important for a variety of reasons. I think you'd all recognize that. And then finally, open meeting law and con on conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. Every Everybody should come in with it. Now, this is too long, I understand. And it's not, it's not gonna keep s someone up at night reading. It's not a page turner. And I think the way it could be made more of a page turner is, you'll s as you, you'll see, I kept a lot of things almost identical to what was in the charter, the bylaw, or the policies. I think it should be um, it should be paraphrased into language that's more e easily digestible. However, the downside is um, we want to make sure that when I do that, we say yeah. true to, but I, I don't think it's that difficult. I think it can be done. I just want the board's feedback on that. I actually like the way you did it because um, it's tw it's 12 pages long. Yes. Right? Well, 11 without the. Without the. Yes. I, I think it's really a, a tremendous work product that I'm sure I would have benefited from when, when I first came on board. Um, and I think it is actually very helpful to have the a really the way you've done it. It's a really easy way to access the bylaws and the charter um, in a way where it's not you know it, if you don't have to try to paraphrase it, then you don't have to worry about if you've got the interpretation quite right. And um, I, I think it's great. So I, I agree. It, it's it's quite a work. It's it's amazing. It's, it's very helpful. I don't think it's too long. One of the questions I found myself asking as I read some of the sections mm. is where there is some practical knowledge that the board has gained mm -hmm. that isn't in the bylaws per se. It's not in the charter per mm -hmm. se. Does mm -hmm. that have a role in this book? I was reluctant to do that. Uh, I think it could. It's up to the board. But um, how about this, Andy? Yeah. YouTube clips of do's and don'ts from past meetings. <laughs> I think we could get a highlight film that would be that would be a real page turn. Um, yeah. Except you'd have to go back and watch. Them. I'd have to go back and watch. <laughs> I'm and sure wait, someone was more than someone out there happy to do that. <laughs> and half of them would be a think about it. Yeah. That, that would give you the insight and. <laughs> You know so that's not quite the depth I was thinking of. <laughs> did you know how I did this? Because this would have been really helpful. Mm. I started coming, I sat back in that corner in September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I came from September until I was sworn in. Right. Mm -hmm. Every time there was a meeting. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I had to do that. Why? Because there was no primer. And I, you know, right. So yeah. that just was a personal thing that I chose to do yeah. so that if I got elected, yeah. 
course, it also gave me three or four months to make a decision whether I really <laughs> want to do it. Um, but th this is good work. I mean, it, you know, in 12 pages, you know, I mean, it's not a historic novel that would, you know, keep me riveted. I, I will swear that to you. But I could spend a Sunday afternoon with this thing, yeah. um, you know, and, and, and feel like, oh, okay, I get that. Yeah, we're supposed to do that. We're not supposed to do this, you know. I think it's good work. Thanks. So, Andy, I thought this was great. Um, uh, I, I definitely think that it is worth paraphrasing some of it because you know, I've read, you know, I've gone through the charter and I've read the bylaws, but you skim, right? And, yes. and I think you, you, you risk missing pertinent pieces of information, and I think you've highlighted the important bits. Um, I think your charts that give reference back to each of the items in yeah. more detail is phenomenal. Um, I would shorten it, frankly, um, just because editing is something I do for a living. Um, so, and I, I had sort of like little minor things here and there that I sort of questioned throughout. But beyond that, I mean, I, I think this is great, and I would have really benefited the, from this when I started as well. So thank you for what must have been a tremendous amount of work. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as next steps for this, um, I know I would have some edits to this that I could work directly with Andy with. Does anybody else have edits that they would recommend or would you like to sort of see, can maybe Andy and I work on this and then we can recirculate? I guess that means my highlight film is out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, maybe that's something you can do after. John, yeah, you, um, I know, I can there's some great there. stuff in there. <laughs> Do, why don't we, should we keep, keep, rather than designate you, shouldn't we keep Andy as the person? Yep. Yes. Sorry, I meant Excellent since we point. can't, because of open meeting law, we can sort of only do it one at a time. Because we right. can't all. Yep. So my thought was, if I can give my edits to Andy. And so can anyone else. We can't do that. And we can't do that. Yep. You can give them to me and I can give them to Andy. Yeah. That we can't. I don't think we, we can do that either. because it's a serial violation yeah. of open meeting law. I end up. I end up receiving um, all, yeah. all, all of your opinions. You can all give them to me, and we can figure something out. But that's not the same as Andy Fair. So, right. Straight. Um, so my, my thought with this is that even if it's all one way, yeah. one yep. Because now he's getting all of our opinions. Yeah. Yeah. So I my my thought was if we do it in stages, and so therefore the public can see. Mm. Our, so if Andy and I work on it together to start, for example, that version gets circulated. If then you have additional questions, you it's it's tedious, but open meeting law sort of boxes us out from being able to just send all everything to one person. And it's uh, the reason the uh, the town manager evaluations have to go to Judy and not someone on board. Uh, I'm happy to do it that way. Another way would be for all of you to um, submit your edits to Bob. And then he put it in the, uh, our they next the packet, packet, and then it goes to me, and then I work on them. Um, and that way, the whole yeah. whole public knows. Mm, that might be, that I, might be better. I would like, like to get efficient. direction from the board on yeah. Yeah. paraphrasing versus not paraphrasing, making it shorter okay. faces so versus. We have the. I want to be cognizant of the timeline that we're setting. Um, yeah. and you can tell me next next time too. I just before I start typing again, I, I you know I, this I, might would go against keeping it shorter. But if there is paraphrasing, I just I think that it's great to have the actual text right here for reference. And I, I view this I could, so you might sit down one Saturday or Sunday afternoon to go through it. But it could always be this great reference for a board member um, if they're like, oh, I need to refresh my recollection on that, and they can go back and they can quickly access um, the relevant. I say, I say this with respect and affection, but um, that's because you're a lawyer. <laughs> and a lot of this is written in legalese. It's not, it's not comfortable to me, I think, to the average person. And he makes reference to, and that the tables, what I loved about it is that the tables give reference to exactly where you can find it throughout the charter and the bylaws. I mean, it's 12 pages if we, you know, I just cut a couple pages. get lost in paraphrasing. Sure. Yeah, and and, and 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 <laughs> you, you you after you know you may have to read it a few times, but then you know exactly what it says. 
And you won't get anything from me because I think having this as a as a document that takes me right to where sources without whoever the writer of the paraphrase has the spin mm -hmm. that, that is unavoidable. Yeah. That that's what's you know, that's, that's, the, that's the only thing that troubles me. And so <laughs> I'm kind of in your camp on and this. And even though there's like oh there's the reference to go I mean how many of us if there's a footnote go to the footnote and say, hmm, well I could read the full citation at this page in this book and, and granted I've done I'll this, my but <laughs> hey, one person thinks it is one. But that's not it's I'll, not, I'll take it back. I just yeah. want to you know, it think, makes it easier. Yeah. I think it makes it easier. Okay. Um, and then Mark I I think you had just said um, what other sort of perhaps what we can call institutional knowledge can be included. And this almost seems like a cheat sheet, right? So of, of information that gets lost. Um, the liquor license violations and guidelines is one of those things. Hmm. Um, yeah, but they're in our policies and I could bring them up, but... But some of it is and some of it isn't, right? I mean, yeah. you know, historic, it, almost like a historical text, if you will, without having to go through I mean, you're reading yeah. the minutes and trying to identify, you know, trying, they're not such, yeah. and they're all, yeah. okay, so I think that's just one example I think of yeah. that I can think of, but, um, you know, do we want to sort of not, you know, it can be an addendum, it doesn't have to be in mm -hmm. this, this is sort mm -hmm. of the overview, Absolutely. right, but yeah. as things come up, to be like, hey, can we throw in a paragraph about X? Send them to me, so that it's and a I'll, live I'll make an addendum, and then every, you know, every year people can say, "All right, let's look back over the year." In your direction, it's going to be the video. <laughs> <laughs> I think that makes the most sense. Can you imagine? Sense. Stay, stay pure. Yes. Talk about an addendum. No, okay. Go. Great. So, uh, can everyone send their feedback um, to me, and I'll assemble it for your next packet. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you, Bob. Another thing you can do by open meeting law is um, you can send me stuff. I can post it online. And then Andy immediately can start working on it. So it doesn't have to wait for a meeting for a That's true. It has sure. to be publicly available. Okay. Not that. I was hoping for a breather, Bob, but thanks. Weeks. I know. <laughs> but just so it's clear. Yeah. Um, so that's great. I think um, everyone sort of has their marching orders on that. Future agendas um, is in the packets. Uh, and there's not too much to add there, so let's leave that as is. And then the last thing is we have two sets of minutes to approve for December 4th and December 11th. Move to accept oh, minutes. John, oh, oh, so not just Mark, uh, John. I just have one thing that's in the future agendas, mm -hmm. and it's here, and it talks about um, Sunday morning recreation okay. somewhere here. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, let me find it. And I think that's a big topic. Yeah, future agenda. Um, can I just suggest to you that <coughs> the thing that that kind of charges this thing up is we had um, we have the girls softball league continuing to need look for field space, and they're looking for like two or three Sundays. Not a change in policy, but two or three Sundays. And the recreation committee said only gave them one because that's really all they're allowed to do yeah. so I don't think it was like they were going no I think they were saying the, the select board's got to <coughs> deal with more than one and I think that that's appropriate for the recreation committee to have done that they're in the scheduling process now mm -hmm. and so the sooner we can address that issue of the, the I think they want three Sundays Yes, they had asked originally for four. <coughs> Whatever it is, it's a, you know, it's a, it's not a change in policy. The first time around, I I do think we should do this in two pieces. You know, honestly, they've got 350 young ladies, and they got to schedule this thing, or they're just kind of screwed. Um, yeah. And this happens like now. So. I mean, I'm sort of. I'm, I, I was at that rec meeting um, and, I, and I got to hear them speak in addition to what I came here. And my concern here is that if we allow one organization to have three mornings in the spring, um, then other organizations are going to say, well, why didn't we get them? And why are they allowed and why we're not? And then if they We've now set precedent for okay. We will give you the town. We'll give you a total of four, these four Sundays, which is a lot. 
in the spring. And then next year, for their planning purposes, are they counting on that? And I would feel badly if then we say, you know what, this didn't work out. It was unfair to give. And so I, I, to me, I think, I think you're right, and I, I appreciate that from a planning perspective, but I'm for them. But I'm worried about the broader implications, especially as this is a huge, Sunday morning hours is a huge issue for the community. And we have not had any public discussions on this to allow public input. So I, first of all, I know it's big, and I know that yeah, we have to be concerned about precedent. We do already have a number of organizations playing on Sundays. It just happens to be not there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's already happening. Mm -hmm. And I think I have to say, shame on us for not being bold enough over the course, because this surfaced one year ago. Mm -hmm. We should have had the policy discussion and we should add the public input and a hearing, and we should so that when well, this goes back years, I mean, I realize that, and you know, but it was, I mean, it was in our face a year ago, and I think we probably should have done exactly what you're saying, and then made a decision, and then they would know what to do. So how about how about this, Bob? What if you and I, because this this particular topic is a two-hour hearing. If we open this up to the public, I have a suggestion that you won't like, but it'll work. Uh, delegate to the Recreation Committee for this year only that ability to grant that permission, and then they can be the gatekeeper. And then you can work on policy. They're the ones that see all the demands. You don't. I don't. You're suggesting is a one-time, one-year activity. Yeah, extend their their authority. I think authority. that may require a hearing. I don't know, and you're certainly going to want it. If the Zurich Committee doesn't want that, then... I was going to say, I don't... They I don't want to touch your... Speak to them. I was going to say, I was God, yeah. they, may, they may say no. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm going to the meeting tomorrow night as the liaison. I yeah, can I ask them something if you want yeah, me to that, ask that, them something. That'll keep this board out of the policy issue and the precedent issue. You've granted one of your other boards permission to deal with a short-term problem that John's identified. Which is in their charter, by the way. If you look it, it at their might charter... Be, might just be passing the buck. But, um, all right, so let's... How about this? How about this? Um, Andy and I will bring it to recreation tomorrow. Um, and then I can coordinate with Bob about what makes sense for okay. February. Okay. I, I am just trying to be attendant to their urgent needs. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I actually, They're in a tough spot. Yeah, and I do think that the recreation committee, if we empower them, you know, have the authority, if you look at their mission statement, their charter, mm -hmm. it says when situations change, and I'm paraphrasing it, mm -hmm. which is always the spin that happens when you yeah, paraphrase yeah, it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but it, it does say something to the effect that they should okay. react to changing situations in the community. So so let's, Andy and I will take that to them and sort of get their input and, and we'll go from there. Great. Thank Can you. I suggest that part and parcel of that is to at not now necessarily, but perhaps at our next meeting, set a date certain for the broader public hearing. Let's see what recreation has to say. Yeah, I just I, I I'm slightly uncomfortable with the kind of pure past the buck and, and <laughs> I agree. Um, Me too. Yeah. And I think a date certain addresses that and might even help them um, appreciate this opportunity. We'll we'll um, circle back with more information at our next meeting. Cool. All right, so now we are on to the minutes. So can we have a motion for the December 4th minutes? Move to accept the December 4th, 2019 Reading Select Board minutes as possibly amended. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Suggest ads? I don't have any. Nope, I don't have any. Got None? nothing. Okay, uh, all those in favor? I have to abstain, I wasn't there. Noted. Uh, okay, can we have the motion for the December 11th? Move to accept the Reading Select Board minutes of December 11th, 2019 as possibly amended. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I don't have any edits for this meeting. I don't either. Neither do I. All those in favor? I think you were at the 11th. I, is that the first one at the Senior Center? Because there was a series of meetings. There was three, four, no, and the 11th was the third, uh, the second one at the Senior Center. It was the second one. I was there. Okay. All those in favor? <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, okay, we are done. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? 